It's a naked bloke flashing his ghoulies without a head and only half an arm. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. It's the eve of a very, very important uh, sort of head to head statesman like conference between Theresa May and Donald Trump. Yeah. Uh, but uh, to commemorate that, and before we start talking about any of that, uh, here is Mike Porky Parry. Very good morning to you, Mr. Parry. And a very good morning to you, Mike. And I have to say, every day of the Trump presidency it just becomes more and more colourful. Colourful. Bizarre. Strange. Strange. Yeah. Um, unpredictable. Yeah, unpredictable. But I suppose yeah. the only thing that's predictable about it is that yeah. it will be unpredictable. It will be unpredictable, and We yeah. did say that, didn't we? I mean, lots of people are moaning and groaning about yeah. the fact that he shouldn't be there. Uh, most journalists are saying, well, mm. whatever happens, there's going to be a story. And that's pretty much is how it's turning out. I, 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 you know, I sometimes uh, worry about journalists who say that. They say, oh, you know, Joe Semino's great for football in this country because he gets a story for us every day on the back page. I don't think that should be a criterion of somebody's worth to their job or to their... Their part in a nation's well, it's culture. Better, it's better if you're if you're a journalist if somebody gives you uh, the opportunity to write something about yeah. them rather than if they don't. Yeah, sure, it? sure. But uh, but so much of the communication process these days is what a man looks like and what he does, and for that, uh, Donald Trump's perfect, isn't he? Well, also so much of what yeah. is now generated as news happens mm. in set piece situations. Yes, so, I mean, it does. if you have to turn up to fifteen different press conferences before the yeah. FA Cup, for example, that's right, uh, or before the Premier League or something mm. like that every mm. weekend, mm. then in the end, uh, you're going to go with the guy that actually yeah. entertains you and gives you a line and makes it a little bit more interesting. Yeah, I would, I would think you're absolutely right. I was delighted they're in Philadelphia today, and um, and that's where our Prime Minister, Theresa May, has flown to. And yes. There's some allegations, oh, you know, she's rushing over to Philadelphia, not even the dignity of Washington and the White House. And I'm sorry, but this is a guy on the move. And Philadelphia, of course, the Philadelphia Freedom Bell, yeah. was the seat of democracy. It which certainly was. And, and, and one of the former capitals of the United States of America. Well, very early it, on, yeah. Well, it only had 11 states when uh, Philadelphia Philadelphia mm. was the, um, you know, well, I think the we capital. did a quiz on Philadelphia once, didn't I we? I think we did, I yeah. I think it didn't do terribly well. That's right, uh, the Liberty Bell and yeah. all that and Rocky. Uh, but anyway, look, it, it, it's still very exciting. I'm still perplexed by his haircut because it actually, it's like a cantilever stand across the front of his forehead. And, and I don't quite get why it is like that. You Are know you going to I mean? come out and say you don't think it's real? No, I'm not saying that because during the course of the election campaign, he actually got a woman to come out from the crowd and touch his hair, didn't didn't he? And, well, that doesn't mean it's not and, real. Does well, it? I, I, okay, I'm not going to pass a comment on that. I thought what was fantastic was seeing um, Air Force One <coughs> uh, making the very very short trip from Washington DC to Philadelphia yes. today, which was yeah. taking about uh, ten minutes. Well, he barely got up in the air. He yeah, barely got up in the air to come down again. Mm. And I thought it looked rather dirty. Did you notice? Dirty. Yeah, it held all sorts of. It had all sorts of brown stains on the underbelly of it, like as though, you know, the fuel um, uh, being expelled from the engine. Maybe they had to expel some was, fuel before they landed in Philadelphia. Well, maybe, I don't know, something like that. But uh, but anyway, you know, that's... Um, you know what my old mate uh, Chris at the PA? What's his Chris. name? Chris. Um, Chris who? Well, he's a very, very famous political journalist. Chris Moncrief. Moncrief, thank you very much indeed. Yes. Yeah, he was a great pal of mine. Is he still alive? I believe he is, because really? I'd, I'd have heard if he died. But he's, he's a ripe old age now. He, he was still working actively when he was in his late 70s from the House of Commons, because uh-huh. he loved the job so right. much. And, you um, didn't fire him then? Sorry? You didn't fire him? No, then. you wouldn't fire a guy like Chris. He had so, so much knowledge about so many things that had gone on in life. And um, what, uh, what happened was, he was over in America with John Major, uh-huh. when John Major was the Prime Minister. Oh, yes. And he was such a charming chap, Chris, mm. he... Um, he got invited onto Bill Clinton's plane, which is Air Force One, right. for a lift from somewhere like Florida back to uh, to Washington. Right. And he's the only English journalist I know who's ever been on that plane. Is that right? Yeah. And 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 that's it, surprising, isn't it? In a way, it's very surprising. But uh, but he, he got on, he flew on it, and he's a terrific guy. He was a bit of a dark horse, Chris, because he? yeah, he um, of course he went was to all... a few secrets. Well, I can tell lay you, them all bare now. No, 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 no. <laughs> but but he. Um, he went to all the party conferences, of course. Yes, you know, of course. And you must remember in, in those, those were days... Those terrible situations, those, weren't well, All sorts of dreadful things happened during uh, party I mean, conferences. Uh, honestly, Chris, Shocking. made and broken at party conferences, those four or five days, you know, everybody gets together yeah. on the late night bar, two and three o'clock well, in the I mean, morning. Well, nobody sleeps, basically. Nobody sleeps, and, and a lot of uh, misbehaviour going with each on. other. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, um, and they were always held on coast, in coastal towns in those days. Now, they, mm. the parties tried to sort of meet the people. Yeah, Birmingham. Um, was they the last Birmingham story, or Manchester or somewhere yeah. like that. 
right now. At least Manchester's got a ship canal. And uh, but in well, the old has got a lot of canals. Uh, it's got a few canals. Well, it's I agree. got loads of canals. Yeah, but it hasn't got one that connects it to the sea like the Manchester ship canal. Well, all canals I mean? eventually reach the sea, don't they? And, well, a very long route from Birmingham to because the sea. Because the Birmingham canal will reach the Manchester canal, which reaches yeah. the sea. So yeah, therefore, yeah. it's the same canal. The Birmingham canal actually connects north to the Leeds Liverpool canal, which then goes to the west and Manchester uh, ship canal, uh, and will which then uh, connects to the sea. Yeah, w- which you. will eventually. Yeah, but but it's a very long convoluted route. That's like saying... Well, that's that, like saying you can't drive from London to Scotland on no, one road. No, no, no. But you can. No, it's not. It's like saying that the small blood vessel in the, your big toe yeah. is, in fact, are, directly related mm. to your heart. It's well, it not. is. It's not. It's, well, of course it is. It's connected. It's just, it's just part of the... Well, uh, let me put it this way. If somebody they, injects a poison yeah. into your uh, blood yeah. vessel in your big toe, yeah. the rest of your body will, will, will suffer and die. Well, it will eventually. It'll take a bit of time. But anyway, getting back to old Chris... Not so, as long as it takes to get from Birmingham to Manchester so, by canal. So it was always in uh, Blackpool, Bournemouth, yeah. Brighton. Uh, I think they were the three staple ones that they used to use. Yeah. I, I did about uh, two or three in Brighton, actually. In fact, I had lunch with Gordon Brown at one of the Labour Party conferences in Brighton. So he yeah. turned up in the House of Commons yesterday. Yeah, I, I saw he did. Yeah. Nobody yeah. knew who he was. Nobody knew who he was, no. He got the worst pre- present ever from a, a US president when he went over there, didn't he? A box of second-hand DVDs oh, or something. something like that, yeah. yeah something like that, yeah. Mm. But anyway, so, uh, so old Chris... Um, was a bit of a dark horse because although he looked to be a sort of cuddly type of you know old uncle, fine Bert upstanding type, character, uh, yeah, type yeah. character, and fine. Well, what are you going to say about him? Well, uh, whenever he went back to a coastal town, uh-huh. he never went to the same B and B twice. Really? Because he, you know, he had this penchant for ladies who ran B and B. A penchant in a pension. Sorry, a penchant in a pension. Uh, what does that mean? Well, a B and B in the continental Europe is right. known as a pension. Oh, is it? And a pension, as you call it, is actually pronounced pension. Yeah. So it's a pension in a pension. Yeah. What does all that mean? Well, he has a pension for something in a B and B. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sake. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And well, they have to uh, go bat out and hit you with it. And um, you know, there was a, a situation once in which he inadvertently went back uh-huh. to um, somewhere he'd been because he used to be on rotation of three or four right. years. You know what I mean? He'd kind of forgotten. Right. He used to drink a lot of Guinness. Did the PA not book it for him? Well, I think he, you know, preferred to he try t- to do it himself and take an allowance. Right. You know what I mean? Mm. You know, because that way he could, he could sort of, you know. But apparently, he went back <laughs> to. You're not maligning him here. I'm not maligning him. No, no I wouldn't malign. That's Chris good. Yeah. He's a great Same guy. Time, by the way. Great guy. Yeah. And so he went back to one that he shouldn't have gone back to, mm. and I think an incident took place. Oh, yes. You know, with a male member of the staff at this uh, B and B. Male member. Yes, yes, yes. What so sort he, of incident? Well, he kind of objected to uh, whatever Chris had made in terms of friendships <laughs> on his previous <laughs> visit. You see what I mean? You know, I mean, this is an allegation, of course. Of course. So, no, not for a moment it could, am I. Could be completely untrue. Uh, not, not for a moment am I uh, besmirching no, the character of, of one not. of the great political reporters Might have been of all a misunderstanding. time. Oh, could have been a misunderstanding. Probably yeah. was indeed. But Chris, of course, was the man who famously was, you know, um, uh, once turned out of um, Reverend Ian Paisley's church. Oh yes, for being on the devil's bottom. Right. You know. I thought that was you. <laughs> well, it was me. We were all in the same group together, oh, I and, see, right. uh, and I'm afraid that uh, you know, I thought with him being there, being an eminent man and right. all that kind of stuff, mm. it wouldn't matter. But no, it I did, see. I'm afraid. Okay. Yeah. So is that it then? Yeah, yeah. Is that the end of the story? Well, no. I well, mean, it doesn't have an end. Uh, you it can't does. Tell leave a story hanging like that. No, that, that was about party conferences and. Well, uh, yeah, but you didn't uh, tell us what happened. So what happened? Oh, he Which got the, out of it all right. There wasn't wasn't a problem. Well, the male member of staff yes. objected to him returning. Yes. So did he then not let him stay there? Uh, well, he went somewhere else, obviously. But I'm, what I'm saying is he had to be very wary mm. of uh, sometimes going back to places. The, he had the view, and I totally agree with him, that over a space of three years, things mm. usually right themselves, you know? Well, they but, can sometimes. But not, not always. always yeah. Not that's, always, That's no. the problem. There are still people who I would say will refuse to shake my hand yes. from the old newspaper business. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, you get a lot of that. Indeed, you, know. uh, you would have that same problem. Yeah. I hated you then, yeah. and I hate you now. Yes, indeed. Oh, right, OK. So with the Scottish accent. Now, Thanks Steve says, if yeah. I was Chris, I'd be very worried. Anybody Porky knows is either Ooh. dead or doomed. <laughs> well, no, not at all. No, no, no. No, no, that's very unfair. Some people's lives have been massively improved by their association with yeah. me. I can yeah. say that without fear or favour. Indeed. Yes. Uh, this is Talk Sport. We will be talking about, of yes. course, Manchester United going through to the EFL Cup. Uh, we might talk a little bit about the FA Cup. We're going to talk a lot about Trump and Theresa May. This is Talk Sport. It's a wonderful night, gotta take it from me. It's a wonderful night, come on and break it on down. It's a wonderful night, you gotta shake it from me. It's a wonderful night, come on and break it on down. It's a wonderful night, everybody can see. It's a wonderful night, come on and break it on down. 
talk sport. We are the two mics. There's lots going on tonight. We've got post report. We've got the Porky quiz on Churchill. Uh, we'll talk to Sandra Lee down in Australia as well. A few people have pointed out, by the way, since you suggested that we've been talking to her about uh, man eating alligators. Yes. They don't have alligators in Australia. They have uh, crocodiles. Uh, so I think now, let me just check my uh, journals. Oh, it's a croc. Yeah, it is, yeah. Man dragged to his death by a 12 foot crocodile. Yeah. On one of Australia's best known tourist routes. That yeah. is completely accurate and correct. Yeah, saltwater crocodiles are mostly the, one, the most dangerous yes, ones. Yes, yeah. yes. There's alligators are mostly, I think, in Florida, aren't they? Yeah, so I think they are yeah. indeed, yeah. So, uh, we've got loads uh, to talk about. Uh, last night, Manchester United went through. Uh, poor old uh, Jose Mourinho, with his new haircut, was very, very uh, uh, sort of tight lipped after the game. Yes. He basically talked for about one sentence and then stormed off. Yes. Didn't seem terribly impressed with the way his team had played because they didn't play very well. Well, you but say that, really matter, but I mean, it? they're through to a final. Uh, if my team was through to a final, I'd be absolutely thrilled and delighted if we go going to Wembley. Yeah. And I think he should realise that he's given the fans something that they crave, which is a, a you know, a a chance at a trophy. Uh-huh. I was going to say a trophy then. I was being a bit predictive. Um, yeah, but, because uh, you did say Liverpool would beat Southampton, which I, didn't happen. I, I, so I did, we can't did, really yeah. say that Man United will beat Southampton. No, you can't, they no. might not. No, I totally agree. Yeah. I totally agree. Nevertheless, a great event. Still, it must be your final. favourite weekend coming up, the uh, FA Cup fourth round. Our second favourite weekend after the third round, I suppose. No, it's not, no. Why not? Because my team's not in it. So, therefore, well, yeah, but it's, it's, the worst, it's the worst the, weekend. You surely still love the, the romance weekend. of the FA Cup. I am very glad for all those fans who are still in the FA Cup who are going to have a wonderful, you know, vision of uh, of glory this weekend. Why don't you pick up a second team? Unfortunately, I haven't got a second team. But, I, I mean, well, for the, for the purposes of the FA Cup, I mean. Well, the only you other team... You can support Sutton, can you? No, 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 I can't support Sutton. I can't Why? support anybody because it's uh, it's treachery. The only other team that I ever keep an eye out for is Chester, which is my hometown team. Mm. And last week... They're not in they, either, are they? They're not in it, no. In fact, they went out of the FA Trophy last weekend, got beaten 3-1 by somebody. I think it was Forest Green or something like that. No. But uh, the weekend before, no, was it last weekend, they played Wrexham, uh-huh. and that's the great local derby. Chester, Chester Wrexham. versus Wrexham. Yeah. Crowd of nearly 3,000, mm. 1-1 draw. Was it? Yeah. 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 Somebody sent out a tweet today about a game which is in the record books, apparently, for the least uh, well-attended game in the Premier League. And I believe it's Wimbledon against Everton in 1993, is which it? only had a crowd of something like 3,000 and something. Yeah, I think I remember that do you, game. Do you think you might have been at that? Because I think yeah, Everton, I think I Everton been, yeah. won it by quite a, good, quite a substantial margin. Yeah, I think margin. I might have been at it. Yeah, I used to go to Plough Lane when uh, Wimbledon played there. Yeah. And at times when Wimbledon were sort of sinking, although they were kept a, a, a afloat for years and years and years by uh, that great businessman, you know, who did the Ayatollah with his hands walking around the edge of the pitch. You yes. know who I'm talking about? Sam? Hey? Sam somebody. Sam who? Sam somebody. Sam Leach. No, no, no. His name was Sam somebody. Oh, he, he, Sam Herman. Ha, Sam Herman. Sam Herman. Middle East businessman. Very, yes. Very clever man. Yes. And he kept women in afloat, and but uh, he kept them in a false position in terms of how many people they could attract to their ground, you know. And uh, and we used to go to um, used to go to Plough Lane. The only way you could get to your seats, I've told you this before, was mm. go through a bar, oh, yeah. either through the social club or, uh-huh. the, or the club bar. That must have been difficult for you. Uh, yeah, well, it was difficult to get to your seat once you passed a bar that was open. Yeah. And um, uh, but, but it was great atmosphere and all that kind of stuff. Everton went out of the FA Cup there. We, we, we got to three consecutive... Uh, well, this was a Premier League game, apparently. Yeah, well, what I'm saying is Everton went to, we went to three consecutive Premier League... Uh, sorry, to FA Cup finals. Uh-huh. Then in the fourth season... Um, we lost at Wimbledon 3-1 and Howard Kendall made the famous speech he pulled a piece of paper out of his pocket and said now we'll concentrate on the Premier League and we won the title that year so yes. it was alright OK yeah. now we get a lot of tweets from people saying there's some kind of technical problem uh, you keep losing the signal when the adverts come on oh yeah uh, well, you can hear us and you can hear the news so yeah. I wouldn't worry too much no, about no, it no 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 there's, there's something wrong with the digital feed yes, apparently. I mean, there would yes. be those who would say actually it's great you don't hear the adverts but I wouldn't be one of those. Well, excuse me, I would say that adverts form a very important part of the well, culture of uh, what we do. Well, they do, of course they do. Otherwise, they... we wouldn't get paid any money. Exactly, it pays yeah. the wages. But, yeah. I mean, a lot of people complain there's too many adverts. Yes. Now, have you seen the story about the best fish and chip shop in Britain? No. Uh, which does not include, would you believe, the top ten, yeah. there is not one Weatherspoons in it. Yeah, well, well, Weatherspoons are not fish and chip shops. Weatherspoons are fish and chip restaurants, which is completely different. They're not fish and chip restaurants. The winner, of course, and yeah. you may or may not have been there, is the Kingfisher Fish and Chips place yeah. uh, in Plimpton in Plymouth. Never been there. What about second I've place? I've been to Plymouth, but I didn't like it because all the buildings are very low level. And do you know why? But, well, it's a navy town, isn't it? Well, it's a navy town. It was smashed to pieces by the Germans during the Second World War, and it was rebuilt by Americans and American money and they made all the buildings look like the buildings are in places like you know downtown illinois and that sort of thing you know what i mean downtown illinois yeah very low level what do you mean downtown illinois well illinois is a state uh yeah okay downtown uh downtown where 
Uh, I mean, almost every major city in America has got skyscrapers in it. Yeah, uh, there's some that haven't in the Midwest and that sort of place. Like where? Like... Uh, You're thinking of Des Moines, Iowa? Des Moines, Iowa could be one. No, I'm they've al- got skyscrapers. I'm also thinking of places like Springfield, Missouri. Springfield, Missouri, I yeah. haven't been to. Yeah, well, is I Is that have. where The Simpsons is from? Uh, no, that's another Springfield, but not sure? in Missouri. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'm sure, yeah. Springfield, Missouri has no skyscrapers? No. Are you sure? Yeah, certain. All right, we'll have a look at the skyline. Yeah, yeah. Second place, Burton Road, Chippy, Lincoln. Lincoln. Ever been there? No, no. Not many people go to Lincoln because not much happens in Lincoln. It's Didn't got you a nice say it cathedral. Had a, had a cathedral with a with a bendy spire. No, that's Chesterfield, which well, is no, the I church. Well, no, Chesterfield has yeah. a witch's spire. Yes, but I thought you said Lincoln Cathedral had some no. kind of leaning spire. No, no, it hasn't. I'm no. sure you said that once. No, I didn't say that. Cause Third place. I, I have no knowledge. Yeah, go Miller's on. Fish and Chips, Haxby. In North Yorkshire. Never heard of it, but okay. I'm sure it's good because Yorkshire do make good food. Uh, you'll like the next one. Uh, Fockaber's Fish Bar in Moray in Scotland. Moray oh, Forth. Murray. It's actually Moray. The Moray uh, Forth. Fockaber's. F-O-C-H-A-B-E-R-S. Yeah, I should imagine that sounds good, yeah. Yeah, yeah you might be able to help me with the pronunciation. Fried haggis as well. You might be able to help me with the pronunciation of the next one. It's Hennigan's Top Shop in a, pla- in a place in Powys, uh, which is spelled M-A-C-H-Y-N-L-L-E-T-H. McKinleth. Mackinac. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next, the Dolphin Takeaway in Dungannon, County Tyrone. Dungannon, County Tyrone. Do you think that Brandon Rogers might go there? Uh, he might well do. He ain't telling you. He might batter himself. Do you know what he said today, by the way? What did he say today? Yesterday it was all about, uh, you know, uh, it for magnificent to be compared to, you know, the man who made the culture of this club complete, the Lisbon Lions. Yes. Because he's gone 26 games without being beaten. Yes. Today, well, he said yesterday, rather uh, sort of conspiratorially, mm. uh, that he was very honoured to be compared. I, I said, you know, honoured to be compared yeah. to the Lisbon Lions yeah. who, co- you know, created the culture of this yeah. club. Today, he's going on about, you know, from Agnifasen to uh, <laughs> think of the, the coaches and managers at this club who have... Uh, Attained and tried to create this record, which uh, we have now achieved. It's the we, the wrong mm. we, yes. which we have now achieved. Oh, I know. Incredible. So he's trying to make out now. I mean, I don't think he's very aware of himself that he is, in fact, the greatest manager of Celtic we've ever had since Jock Steen. Yeah. Um, but well, he that's does, what he's trying to say. He does fail to point out throughout all this that actually he's had no competition whatsoever no. because there's a very weak Rangers team, not through anybody else's well, fault, indeed. except that Rangers went well, financially bust. Yesterday. I don't know what you got it, why you got it in for Brendan Rodgers. Well, I haven't. It's, it's just that he repeated the, you know, the, the claim today that the 26 games without defeat mm. is one of the most magnificent footballing records in the history of football. Uh-huh. But it, but it, but it's it's a little shallow, isn't it? And well, I suppose it is. Yeah. I mean, he is very fond of himself, as we've said many times. Yeah. Tony says this: try not to encourage Mike Parry towards complex wordplay. Yes. The poor guy can barely pronounce his own name. Have we got to the best yet of the fish and chip shops? Oh, I'm still doing them. Right, come on. Um, then. Uh, the next, uh, the independent fish and chip restaurant of the year award. Yes. Goes to Harbour Lights in Falmouth in Cornwall. Harbour Lights, Falmouth. Yeah, OK, I won't disagree with that. Okay. I, I may have been there. Best, ha- um, Harbour Lights, by the way, mm. was the name of a TV series was it? that Nick Berry oh, yeah. starred in. Is he the boat from Heartbeat? Yeah, exactly, and EastEnders. Uh-huh. He, he, he made his name in EastEnders. Yeah. He quit and everybody said he was mad. Yeah. He then became a star of Heartbeat, okay. became another huge star again. Yes. And he then left that. And we saw him once in the Holiday Inn in Leeds when we were up there for a football match. When you say we, yeah, what do you mean? Well, me and a couple of footballing mates. Well, you don't be- mean me and you. I don't mean me. And no, I'm going to Leeds. No, no, for ex- a football match. no, exactly. And uh, and the set of Heartbeat was very close by, and he had a permanent suite in the Holiday Inn, and we yeah. were chatting to him about it. He was ever such a nice guy. But permanent then- suite in the Holiday Inn. Yes, it's yeah. sad, isn't it? No, no, it's a it's a I very mean, nice holiday. There are places to have a permanent suite in. Yeah, you know, like the Old Gonquin in New York. Yes, or perhaps even the Essex House in New York. Yeah, uh, or perhaps. Even the That'd Intercontinental great, in Washington. I might stay there when I go there again. All right, okay. Yeah, six hours. But what you um, don't want is a suite uh, permanently in the Holiday Inn. Anyway. Well, that's where he had it. And, and uh, so anyway, he left Harbour, and, that, and then they wrote a series around him called Harbour Lights. Yes. And the basic. Is that about fish and chip shop? No, no. But it was about a harbour, and they always have fish and chip shops on harbours. Uh-huh. And the basic plot was that he was a former Navy diver oh, yeah. who had to leave the Navy in disgrace mm. because there had been some terrible incident in which a diver who was at of which he was in charge oh, of, yes, had been killed, had died, that's yeah. right, in some, you know, diving accident or yeah. something. But it wasn't his fault, of course. No. You know, he was just unlucky in the court-martial. And then he became harbour master of this little uh, port somewhere, oh, yeah. somewhere in the southwest. it's supposed to be. It was it a bit like Midsummer Murders, where everything happened? Yeah, that sort of thing. But it was such a terribly, shockingly awful series, <laughs> because it, 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 was, it was... I don't remember it at all. It was completely characterless, if you yeah. see what I mean. Yeah. And it wasn't his fault, but I, I haven't seen him much since then. Oh, well, never anyway, mind. Anyway, please go on. Uh, OK, best 
best mobile fish and chip operator reward, the Hip Hop Chip Shop in Salford, Manchester. Salford, eh, Salford. Right. Eh, that's where Manchester United there's, there's, are, isn't it? The, on, the only eh, one, and this is the only one that yeah. I can honestly say that I've been in, mm. uh, because it is, of course... Did you from, say that was a mobile one, by the way? It says mobile, so, yeah. So that's like a, a fish and chip... Uh, Truck, fish and chip truck. Yeah, we used to, when I lived in Wiltshire, yeah. we used to have one of those. Oh, okay. It used to come around, uh, like every, I think it was every Thursday night. Really? And it would drive into the village. Any good? It was great, yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, they used to cook it in the van. Yeah, right. Um, and because when you're living in the countryside, yes. you're kind of slightly starved of, shall we say, <laughs> yeah, food right, yeah. options. You yeah, know, starved of, like, real culture. Well, well, there was only one pub in the village. You know, you all sort of get together in the local village yeah. hall and have a hop. Well, yeah. I mean, supposedly <laughs> there was a swingers uh, yeah. group. Yeah, I'm, in sure the village, there was. Um, I'm sure there was. Which, yeah. which I was told about, which never I never found out about. Uh, but they lived up in the I sort don't of the close. That. What do you mean? You lived in a you lived in a community where there was a where there was a swingers community. Because you'd like to get in there and no, you'd like to start Rogerising wrong. somebody else's no. wife. Well, I'm sorry. There's yeah, only one yeah. guy sitting here yeah. who's been Rogerising other no. people's wives. No, and no. I think you'll find that's you. No, no. I don't and if you're not to... careful, I'll tell you exactly whose wife it, uh, it was. This is a like, family show. That guy that rang in. What's the next fish and chip shop? What's the next fish and chip shop? Well, this is the only one I've ever been to. Right. Yeah. Because guess where it is? Where? Borough Market. Oh, go on. And it's a place called Fish. It's a restaurant called Fish! Exclamation mark. D- but can you take away from that? Uh, they have a takeaway section. OK. But this is also this has been put in the Best Food Service Operator Award. In Borough Market in London? Yeah. Oh. It's where, you know where the, uh, the market porter is? Yes. You have to walk through the market. Yes. And then there's another street. And it's there. It goes under a road. Maybe I'll take you there for lunch the one day. Yeah, good idea. And what's the other one? Uh, what do you mean? I thought it was the number one. Eh? Well, no, I've given you number one. Oh, I see. Okay. I mean, these are so all different awards. 10, so First yeah, okay, place yeah. is the Kingfisher okay. Fish and Chips plot place in Plymouth. Okay. Right. You've also got uh, yes. a place called Good Catch, which is a sustainable seafood award. Yeah. Rockfish in Devon. Yeah. Uh, you've also got uh, in Bradford, the Towngate Fisheries, which gets the Healthy Eating. Bradford. Healthy Eating Fish and Chips Stayed award. there for six weeks once at a trial. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Best Newcomer Award. Yeah. Longlands Fish Kitchen, uh, Tynemouth, Tyne and Weir. Yeah. Uh, and you've got in County Antrim staff training and development. Where was that award. one in Tyne and Weir again? Um, it was um, Tynemouth. Tynemouth. Yeah. Oh, I'll have been there. I would have been sand. to that fish and chip shop. Yeah, I've been Long to it. Long Sands I Fish been Kitchen. To it. I've been have to you? it. I've been to it. Yeah. Are you sure? Uh, certain, certain. Yeah. And then a dry, a dry right young fish fryer of the year award goes to George Papadamu yeah. of Papas in Willoughby Hull, yes. city of culture. He sounds like he's of Greek origin. He may be. And they make great fish and chips. They do. Yes. Well, everybody who makes fish and chips, I would say, does quite well with Yeah, it. yeah, I would say it so in this country. Said. Anyway, so those are the places that have been named, uh, by and large, the best fish and chip shops. Well, I think that's terrific. Maybe I'm you glad should go you... on a tour and say, yeah, see yeah. if you can visit as many of them as possible. I would, uh, I would endorse that. OK. I mean, fish and chips is always a late night thing for me after the pub. Mm. You know what I mean? I don't know why. I'll have some fish and chips. Mm. But I liked, actually, I liked the battered sausage. I used to have four battered sausages. Yeah. And uh, I was never, when I was, a ki- when I was a teenager, I never used to be that keen on fish. So I used to yeah. always get a pie instead. Yeah, well, the pies were a bit dodgy that time of night, I always <laughs> thought, you know. But uh, no, I love the battered sausage. Yeah, well, lots of things are dodgy at that time of yeah. night. Uh, this is Talk Sport. Yes. Crazy. But that's how it goes. Millions of people live in as hobos. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. There is, of course, a porky quiz tonight. Uh, it is on Winston Churchill. Uh, we're thinking about putting it out on Facebook Live. We're not sure we've got the technology at the moment, mm-hmm. particularly with some of the uh, issues we've got technically uh, yes. on the show tonight. Yes. We may do it on Facebook Live, but we may not. What's that? The Porky Quiz. Yes, we that's right. Film it, that's you know? right. Absolutely. Yeah, we're, we're thinking about it. Yeah. We're, we're, we will we're have the technology. Ourselves, we're working ourselves up to it. Basically, we certainly are. There's also Post Report coming Post up report, as well. Right, yeah. Yeah. Yes, well, I'll tell you, was a great story going on. Yeah. I know how you're a student of all things ecclesiastical. Oh, absolutely. But have you seen the story? It was running around on the Telegraph website earlier today. No. And here's the headline: Vatican takes over leadership of Knights of Malta chivalric order uh, after British Grand Master resigns in acrimonious battle over condoms. Oh, really? Me? This yeah. sounds like a complicated. Yeah, one. It really is. Not supposed to have condoms uh, in the Catholic Church. Yeah, are well, they? I don't think they're uh, too keen on it. No, but I think they're changing. And the Grand Master is yeah. Matthew Festing. Did Matthew you know Festing. That? Um, and he's had a ba- battle over yeah. uh, uh, all sorts of things, right? Yes. But it says the Vatican is to take over the Knights of Malta yes. after the British head of the ancient order resigned yeah. because of this acrimonious row. Right. So now the Pope is going to appoint one of his own men yeah. as the new head of the order. Apparently, this is a massive story in, yeah. in sort of ecclesiastical circles. This I'm is, quite surprised uh, that you haven't spotted it. This is Pope Benedict, right? Uh, 
it is. Right. Now, didn't, do you, don't you remember on this very no, show? No, it's Pope Francis. Pope sorry. Francis, I'm sorry. Yeah, of course it the is. The Argentinian yeah. guy. Yeah, that's right. Pope Francis. Pope Benedict. Pope Benedict was the... He wasn't uh, a German pre- guy, was he? Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was the previous was that, guy. Was that, was that Benedict? Uh, yeah, it was Benedict, yeah. yeah. And um, Pope Francis took over in 2014. Right. Now, don't you remember on this very show a couple of weeks ago, yeah. I revealed that mm. everybody thinks Pope Francis is having... He's going a bit, a bit nutty. Yeah, so. yeah, he's, he's off his rocker mm. and making some very strange decisions. Yeah. But, I mean, that, of course, is the sort of negative twist to him trying to reform the church, yes. some say, because he wants to introduce an element of, you know, divorcees being welcomed back to the church, yeah. some sort of contraception, maybe, yeah. even priests having relationships yes. with members well, of the opposite this, sex. This, and all may, this, kind this of stuff. may have led on from yeah, it, you see, yeah. because apparently this order, this order called the Knights of Malta, yes. right, which apparently tra- traces its origins back to the Crusades. Of course they do, They've yeah. actually got a foreign minister, right? Yeah. Who's not? He's a German aristocrat. I mean, it's a bizarre world, this, right? Oh, guess, you, guess what this guy's name is? Albrecht Freiherr yeah. von Boeslager. Yeah, von right? Boeslager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, Boeslager's right. at it and again. Apparently, Boeslager yeah. had upset the head of the <laughs> yeah. order, right? Yeah. Because he supposedly allowed condoms to be distributed yeah. um, in some part of the developing world. Yes. So he fired him. So this guy has now been fired. Mm. Boeslager has been given his marching right. orders okay. by the order of Booz the. Boeslager uh, given the boots. <laughs> yeah. Boots yeah. it out, right? The Knights yeah. of Malta are now looking for a new foreign minister. However, mm. uh, the Pope has now apparently mm. kicked out the guy who's in charge. Yes. Um, and is now giving one of his own men uh, the job of, of running the, uh, yes. the the order. Yes. And apparently this is the first time uh, um, that this Englishman, who's 67, yes. it's the first time in something like uh, since 1169. Yeah. Uh, sorry, he's the fourth Grand Master to have stepped down since 1169. Yeah, wouldn't surprise me. Incredible. Wouldn't surprise me. I mean, the what it, what what is happening is that uh, ever since Pope Francis got in, uh, he's been trying to introduce a plan to allow divorced and remarried mass goers, i.e., people who go to mass. Yeah, not mass rogerizers. No, not mass rogerizers, no. although they may be uh, <laughs> as well. Well, you can be both, I suppose. You can, to receive Holy Communion. Yeah. But uh, the secular division of the church have treated this as an inside the beltway story they're yeah. talking about, i.e., yeah. it's a small group of people in the middle who are trying mm. to say we've got to spread it out. But you well, see, apparently, this is like a soap opera in the world of oh, the Vatican. Oh, my, it is. Don't you realise the Vatican is recognised as a separate country? Yeah. It's got its own ambassador to yeah. the United Nations. Yeah, but I didn't know that this, that this particular order yeah. also had ambassadors and all that. Well, you, which apparently they do. Yeah, they do. Now, I mean, uh, Boozlager apparently was, was, to- was technically called the Grand Chancellor. Boozlager was the Grand Chancellor. Absolutely mm. right. Now, I mean, have you read the book by Dan Brown, uh, you know, the, the book that uh, everybody's raving about, about five or six years ago. Well, the one that was made up in Seven Edinburgh, years ago. they made a film out Yeah, of. that's right. Was it cool? Yeah. You know the film I'm talking about? Yeah, I do know the film you're talking but, about. Um, but you see, that was all about the mad world of Inside the Vatican yes. and, the, and the Knights uh, Templar. The Knights Templar, yes. That's right, yeah. And and th- these these very secret orders within the sort of Catholic Church and within the Vatican and within the sort of, you know, ecclesiastical underworld, we yes. could call it, mm. all came to um, to the public eye. This is the Da Vinci Code you're talking about. The right? Da Vinci Code, thank you very much indeed. Yeah. It all came to the public eye when, if you remember, <coughs> excuse me, we were sitting right. in our Daily Express Erie one day, OK, yeah. and we looked to our right to see Blackfriars Bridge and there were a group of policemen both on boats and in cars on top of the bridge. Well, this is the Pope's banker, right? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. They were doing something. Mm. We were all sitting there in conference thinking, I wonder what's going on there. I suppose we... As a you know, an international newspaper, better send a reporter or two down there to find out what's going on. And what happened was Pope's banker had been found hanging yes. underneath Blackfriars Bridge, Bridge yeah. next to the Daily Express. Shocking. And uh, was, it a bank, a, was it the Bank of Am- Ambrosia or something like that he worked for? It was the Bank of Ambrosia or something, but yeah. he, he was called God's Banker because he, he, he handled the, the uh, Vatican finances. <laughs> but just in case anybody thought, oh, well, he'd probably had too much inside to commit suicide, mm. um, the police then discovered three house bricks in each of his pockets, uh-huh. which meant that actually somebody had made sure that when he was lowered below the bridge oh, with yeah. the rope around his neck, he wasn't going to be able to pull himself oh, up so again. So what, you're saying it wasn't uh, suicide? No, yeah, of course it wasn't. Suicide. They never really proved who killed him. They never proved who killed him, and and you know it was a it was a, a very dark sort yeah. of uh, murky crime and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. it was fascinating. Well, apparently this ancient order is apparently yeah. officially known as the Sovereign Military Hospitaller Order of Saint John of Jerusalem yeah. of Rhodes yeah. and of Malta. Yeah, that's right. Well, it that... maintains diplomatic relations with more than one hundred countries. That's right, and has permanent observer status. The UN. It does. And, that's and, amazing. Isn't and it? the Maltese cross yeah. is their traditional sort of symbol. Maltese kind of Falcon. The, no, no, 
No, Maltese Falcon was a film with Humphrey Bogart. It was, it? yeah. Mm. yeah. But, um, the Blackbird. The Blackbird, yeah. But, I mean, the murky world of, uh, murky. of, of uh, Vatican stroke Catholics, uh, stroke ecclesiastical yeah. uh, inner orders, yes. inner orders, right, yeah. is one of the most secretive organisations in the world. It's more secretive than the CIA. Yeah. You know that? Well, the Grand Master was summoned by Pope Francis and asked to resign, right? Not Boozlager. Uh, not Boozlager. No, no. Boozlager's the guy who got He's sacked. He's the Chancellor. He got sacked by the, <laughs> by the Grand Master. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's like something out of the, the you know, it is, Alice yeah. in Wonderland. It, it is, yeah. It so is, yeah. apparently, but here's what one <laughs> insider is. says: if the Pope asks you to resign, yeah. you don't have much choice. So it's like sort of something out of the mafia, isn't it? It, it is. It, it, make it, it an offer you can't refuse. Yeah, but I'm, I see. I'm not sure how many people listen to this new Pope because, as I said to you, um, he uh, he likes his football, doesn't he? He, he, he likes his football yeah. uh, because he's Argentinian. I thought. I think he supports. Um, uh, he supports the club, does he not, that Lionel Messi was affiliated with? Yeah. And that, the, the old boys. Uh, yeah, yeah, which one was it? Um, Newell's old, bo- old boys, no they're, it? no, they're called young boys, not old boys, aren't they? Well, they There's two great teams in uh, in uh, Buenos Aires. Yeah. One is uh, River Plate. Yes. Uh, that's because... But I think he's associated with the, not one of those. Uh, is he not? I thought yeah. he was. Yeah, OK. Uh, but anyway, um, you see, Pope Francis, trying to relax the rules on communion for Catholics, has caused all sorts of terrible rows, mm. and you will find you will find that the what will happen now is is that uh, you know the factions which are simmering all the time under the under this surface and which a pope has to keep together as a political figure as well as a uh, God's messenger on earth are now all starting to be driven apart. Yes, exactly right. Mm. Yeah, according to uh, what I'm looking at here, Pope Francis uh, has a fa- does have a favourite football team. So I think he was I think he was quite a good a goalkeeper or something in his time. Wasn't yeah, he? I think so. Um, and uh, San Lorenzo is the name. Yes, or that's it's, it. It's, it's spelled San Lorenzo, but I believe it's pronounced San Lorenzo. That's right. Yeah, or it would be if it was in Spain because there's a very right. good golf course down in southern, in fact, in Portugal, uh, called San Lorenzo. Yeah, I mean the, the Pope's influence stretches all the way. I'm told to the uh, Jesuit movement in Argentina yeah. because that's another branch of the Catholic Church. I'm sure Church. it would do, yeah. And there seems to be, there seems to be also, amazingly, um, some great discourse within the politics of the Catholic Church in the Vatican about Pope Francis's relationship with Donald Trump. Uh-huh. Um, on the basis... Well, we're that, going to talk about Donald Trump in a minute. Yeah, that Donald Trump is seen as a womaniser from the past, yeah. you know, not now, obviously, but in, uh, in in previous associations, and that, once again, you know, he shouldn't be taken into the confidence of the uh, the Catholic Church. No, well, what about Bill Clinton? I mean, they can't have it always, can they? Well, I'm not sure Bill Clinton had any sort of association with the Vatican, mm. did he? Uh, well, he must have done if he was the President of the United States, surely. Uh, well, I wouldn't have thought so. Why not? Well, because um, they have the secular side of business in mm. the political world of America yeah, where well, you don't do. have to you don't merge uh, state and church yeah, do I'm you? sure John F. Kennedy had uh, uh, plenty to do with the Vatican because he was a Catholic well uh, very much Brunton so. says this on Twitter booze lager Mike Perry will want to sign up to this ancient order this is a bit harsh isn't it yeah <laughs> but I bet you a few people did sign up on the basis that they thought that booze lager's name was not a name but in fact a movement yes exactly right yeah. now coming up we're going to be talking about Donald Trump yes. Jared Rizzi is the White House correspondent for uh, POTUS on Sirius XM uh, discussing Trump's first week in office. We're going to find out how he thinks he's doing. This is Talk Sport. Yes. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics coming up a little bit later on. Yes. Of course, it is going to be uh, Porky Quiz time. Uh, Winston Churchill is the yeah. subject matter. That's so, right. Uh, not quite as ancient as the ancient order of Malta. No. Uh, but we will be going back in time. That's right. Uh, I haven't seen the questions yet, but um, you know, I'm predicting that they might be quite difficult. Oh, sorry. What makes you think that? I don't know. It's just a feeling I've got. Just a hunch. Well, hang on. You can't have hunches like well, of course that. I can have hunches you've been speaking like that. to somebody. No, I can have hunch. I can have a hunch about anything, right? So I can this, have a hunch. this was a direct instruction no, to I can have the so-called a hunch. independent no, quizmaster. I can have a hunch, for example, to make them difficult. No, I can have a hunch, as I had uh, the other night, that Joe Conter was going to beat uh, Serena Williams. Turned out it wasn't a very good hunch. No, it wasn't. I no. also c- could have a hunch that Derby are going to knock Leicester out of the FA Cup, yeah. which is another hunch that I have. Yeah. I also have a hunch that these questions are going to be quite difficult. You can have a hunch about anything. No, you can't. You've never had a hunch about anything? Not about something as specific as a set of questions in a quiz, which is going to happen in, like, uh, an hour and a half's time. An hour and a half's time? Yeah. A bit later than that. Yeah, Okay. maybe two hours' time. Why can't I have a hunch about it? You know something I don't. I don't. You have you have Absolutely been conferring not. with the, the quiz masters. Incredibly, that is not true. Yes, That's you have. A terrible thing to say. Well, only time will tell. I am already on the alert. Yes. And well, you've said that you think you're going to get seven out of ten. Uh, yeah, I, d- I do. Yeah, and our millions of listeners should be aware of what I've just said, and I'm sure they are. They're not stupid. 
unlike you. Okay? You think I'm stupid, do you? I think you are, to have revealed that you have been in, in collaboration. I didn't say I haven't revealed anything. You I must said I've have got been a in collaboration. No, I said I've got a hunch that they might be quite difficult questions. I'm watching you. How about this from Barry? No matter how badly you do on the quiz tonight, Porky, here yeah. are some words from the great man himself. Yes. And this is a quote from Winston Churchill. Yes. Uh, success is the ability to go from one failure to another with no loss of enthusiasm. That's right. Sounds pretty much like your life. No, it's not my life at all. And I, I've never quite understood that... Um, that quote, except for the fact that, of course, you know, Winston Churchill did have moments of despair, as you can imagine, if you're trying to lead Britain through the Second yeah, World absolutely. War. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, these were difficult and, times. Uh, and sometimes some of the things he said were for the benefit of the public, not for himself. Mm. So, you know, if you suddenly heard that, you know, another ship had gone down, yeah. quite a lot of ships went down, actually, yes. the Atlantic convoys and all that, yeah. and you had to come up with quotes like that to mm. bolster yes. the morale of the country. Uh, Andy says, Roger's impression is better than a Bobcat Bob one. Yeah. It also sounds like the Peaky Blinders guy, Mr Shelby. Yeah. Mr Churchill wants to see you soon. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that was, was in that, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was in that, yeah. And, mm. and, and, and In fact, Tommy Shelby ended up working... Uh, ended up working he? for sort of the Secret Service. Well, he? he ended up working for Winston Churchill um, at a time when, of course, there was some very murky politics going on. Uh, here's right. one from uh, Jim who says, My son goes to school in Springfield. Porky yeah. is correct. The tallest building is the Springfield Hilton, 360 feet high. Thank you. It doesn't say how many stories, though. Sorry? It doesn't say how many stories that is. Yeah, well, you know, it's not very high, is what it? What are we doing in Springfield? Uh, interviewing, uh, I think I told you about him, the Apache Indian who got life for murdering. No, right. Is, two, that, is that where the uh, state penitentiary was? Yeah, that's right. Two FBI guys, mm. and they locked me in a cell with this man who was like a, you know, a homicidal maniac. <laughs> and uh, no, no, seriously, luckily there was only one of you in a room. Yeah, and 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 by the way, his sentence was life without um, any remission, which means that if you kill somebody else, you can't serve any more years. Yeah, because you're in there for life anyway. Mm, okay. So I felt rather, uh, you know, vulnerable. Oh, okay, Steve is about six foot four, by the way. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, luckily he would be sitting down and chained to. The the desk, presumably. No, he wasn't. No, was he not? no, he wasn't. No. Normally, they chain no, him, chain him down. No, he didn't even have. He didn't even have handcuffs on. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I couldn't you believe it. Absolutely, yeah, bricking it. That's right. Um, yeah. Porky's love child, uh, which is a fake account, but I don't mind reading this. Yes, out. the Pope was a good goalkeeper, especially good on crosses. Who was the Pope? Oh right, okay. Is that it? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. The previous goalkeeper was a pope. Uh, the previous pope was a goalkeeper, wasn't he? The previous goalkeeper. Yeah, yeah. Was, was a pope. <laughs> yeah, no. Previous pope was a goalkeeper. <laughs> old, uh, old John Paul. Have you seen the Pope of Greenwich Village? No. That's a good film. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Old John Paul. I don't think he was a goalkeeper though. Old John Paul, who was everybody's favourite pope, the yeah. guy who came from Poland, the yeah. first non-Italian pope in history. Yeah. He he was a goalkeeper. He he played for. Um, Caravicci, I think. Really? Yeah, yeah. Not Caravaggio. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Let's Caravicci. talk to Jared Rizzi, who is, of course, our man in Washington. Yep. We're, we're going to find out later on today uh, whether Theresa May and Donald Trump are going to have a fruitful meeting. Exactly. He's effectively the first uh, state uh, leader who's going to meet him in his new role as President of the United States. But he's had an interesting week. Let's find out from Jared, uh, who's with Sirius XM, uh, exactly what sort of week he has had. Jared, a very good morning to you. Welcome to the show. Well, good morning, Port. Good morning, MG. This is, uh, we've already had, I guess, uh, what we would call a snafu. The White House just sent out a few minutes ago guidance on tomorrow, what's tomorrow for us uh, yeah, yeah. later today for you guys, uh, saying that uh, looking forward to these meetings with Theresa May, misspelling her name three times. So they've really done this well. They've got <laughs> out some, uh, some official documentation spelling uh, Theresa without an H all three times. <laughs> you think, uh, I mean, you wonder whether there's, there's, there's a sort of pattern emerging that. here. That 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 there's, there's nobody in the White House who's sort of checking anything, really. No, I, I think that they are severely understaffed in a lot of different ways. And I think the press office uh, at the White House is, is one of those areas. They're just they've had a lot of trouble getting people to kind of sign up for the job. And that has been uh, that has presented some difficulties, I guess, with the spell check. But I mean, they've got the uh, the bust of Churchill back in the Oval Office. I saw it just the other day. So I guess I guess things are going to be copacetic. It's yeah, well, just, you uh, see, that, that to me is very symbolic of, uh, of what's going on with Trump, because yeah. everything that he's seems to have done in the first week is all about image and not particularly about substance. Yeah. It's all about, you know, signing orders that might not necessarily actually ever come to pass because it has to go through Congress in the first place. Making statements about, you know, uh, banning people from certain countries from coming in, which apparently right. is unconstitutional. And now, uh, you know, telling it, letting everybody know that, you know, the, the Churchill bust is back, so everything's fine, you know? Right. Well, I have always assumed, by the way, that it was uh, a GCHQ listening device. That's mm. been, it may well be. My assumption, <laughs> yeah. 
moving forward. So I'm I'm just glad that we're finally giving you guys a little bit more information. Yeah. But no, I, for our sake, I, I I tend to agree with you. This is a president who is very good at the look of president. Uh, I was in the Oval Office with him just a couple of days ago, signing executive orders, and he's got this affect where he would sign it with his elaborate kind of jaunty signature, and then he would hold it up. And, and show it to the press. And this yeah. is not some again, President Obama never did this once in the time, but he just, like, as if it were a finger painting, yeah. just showing it to us. And it was it was wild to me. Um, he's been talking about a lot of, and you're, you're right about this image question. Um, there, there are a lot of things on, on the docket that you, you've just mentioned that are very controversial, some of which will require Congress. They've actually – it looks like they may be backing off the refugee stuff that you just mentioned. Mm. They, they're very vul- – and because they're so image-focused, they're very vulnerable to pressure, and I think some of that is actually starting to show. Yeah, I think you might be right. Now, I heard the president speaking tonight, Jared, and – it was quite amazing. Everything about him is amazing. But he, he said, you know, over the next few days, he's going to be doing some trade deals, you know, with people abroad. Yeah. He hasn't yet got mm-hmm. a trade minister. Yeah. But uh, I'm going to have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to do that myself. Right. OK. And he got um, a little laugh from the crowd. Right? Well, I think then the whole world was, uh, was supposed to respond by saying, well, you know, the Donald, he does some good deals. So we're safe in his hands. America's safe in his hands. But I mean, what he's actually done is in the first few days of his presidency, he's now taken on a completely new role as, you know, what we call in this country, the Minister for Trade, as well as Prime Minister. So I wonder how many other jobs, how many other cabinet jobs you'll scoop up in the next week or so. There has been a severe consolidation of power by the White House, and not just this administration, but in the last several. And so some of that is absolutely it it has become this this concentration of power at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. And some of that is natural. It's easier. It's faster to do the job of the executive without running it by. But now we're seeing and this is actually cropping up in all sorts of insidious ways like the uh, uh, requiring approval of tweets from the national parks all around the country because they were tweeting about climate change. Mm. Uh, There's these little things that are just getting in the works and and really showing how vulnerable and I think how sensitive this administration is to any kinds of criticism and how they are choosing to express that uh, outwardly. Mm. And what about Sean Spicer? I mean, he's quite a colourful character in his own right as well. I mean, this is a guy who's being accused of uh, coming up with what what has become known as alternative facts. Yeah. Uh, I'm told that in the past few hours he's been tweeting out uh, different passwords to things, which is kind of ironic yeah. given what Trump said before the uh, <laughs> before the election about the Democrats' password, which was, of course, password. Even though, even though, even better than all that is the fact that we found out today that the uh, at POTUS. Uh, Twitter account yeah. was linked briefly to a Gmail account, so that's I don't think as secure <laughs> as it could have possibly been. No, no but Sean, Sean Spicer is an interesting character. You know, the the press briefings used to go about, and I, I've been in the White House for the last six years. They used to go about ninety minutes with uh, the previous uh, press secretary, Josh Ernest. Spicer did eighteen minutes of questions, rapid fire, mostly to friendly news outlets, conservative outlets, and then just walked out on. Uh, uh, this was just yesterday in the briefing Mm. so it's a very different environment they've actually shut down the the main phone number for the white house uh they're no longer taking the main switchboard on Uh, a lot of the the uh, emails to different agencies have been shut down this is an administration that is allergic to scrutiny and spicer you know you mentioned uh allergic to facts or excuse me you you mentioned uh, alternative facts He, he, he more than that if you listen very carefully he started saying not I believe, or the president believes, but just saying now, this is what the president believes, and just kind of setting it off to the side as if it just had a bad smell to it. So it's just, it's, he's distancing himself very quickly. The other thing is, Jared, I found it amazing that the, the president spent an inordinate amount of time praising his Veep, his vice president, and saying that, you know, this man is the greatest vice president in history. What's his name? Oh, Mike Pence, is it? Uh, Mike Pence, the yeah. VP, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, the VP, yeah. And, and and he was sitting on stage there, Mike, and he was beaming and smiling, and, and, and Mr Trump kept saying, the president kept saying, this guy's great and all that. I mean, what happened to the days when one vice president described the job as not worth a bucket of cold sick? That's not a very yeah, nice analogy. I think, I think we're, well, we're, one did. we're past that. And so, you know, Pence is an interesting character. The vice president's an interesting character because he is 
uh, he represents so many parochial interests for President Trump, and I mean that in both ways. Yeah. This is uh, coming up tomorrow for us, the March for Life on Washington. This is going to be a group of anti-abortion demonstrators, very big with Catholics and uh, others in the United States. They all descend on Washington. It's going to be a big crowd, probably the second biggest crowd after the Women's March and well outstripping the president's inauguration. So I'm sure he'll be upset about the bronze medal on that one. But they, this is a pro-life movement that uh, the, the president very much wants to wrap himself around. And Pence is the ticket to that yeah. because he has evangelical credentials. Trump, obviously, for for uh, so many reasons, does not. Yeah, but I mean, the the, vi- the Veep in, in past administrations has always been regarded as a non-person. I remember that the Kennedys thought that Lyndon Baines Johnson was an ignorant, thick, uh, cowboy-type character from Texas who, who didn't have a clue and who they regarded as basically a waiter around the White House. So things have clearly changed, mm. haven't they? Well, Joe Biden was quite well regarded by um, by Obama because he was kind of Obama's connection yeah. to what you might call traditional yeah, Democrats, but, but, wasn't he, Jared? But generally speaking, the, yeah, Veep, very much so. the Veep has always been a pretty lost character, hasn't he, in any administration? <laughs> I think especially as we get closer to, you know, the vice president's a uh, tie-breaking vote in the Senate. The Republicans are very close to that number right now. Uh, I think he wants, for a lot of reasons, guys, I think he wants to keep the vice president very happy with what this is. And uh, he also knows that Pence is close friends with Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan, who is going to be leading the legislative agenda uh, this is, uh, you know, th- this is where a lot of the the actual stuff is going to get done because, as you say, these executive orders are not really too operative. The legislative vehicles are going to be what actually changes things here in Washington. Sure. And how's the old uh, press gallery behaving itself? Because certainly it looks as though they're going to have to kind of up their game to some extent. Because he obviously, well, unruly obviously, as ever. Yeah, but I mean, the problem is, is that unless they change their tack, as it were. I mean, I saw somebody uh, writing a piece the other day, uh, which appeared, I think, in the Guardian. I can't, can't remember who exactly wrote it, but saying that you know, Sean Spicer is refusing to answer a question from any individual reporter. The next reporter that he goes to should ask that question. So it's almost going to turn into a kind of a he said, she said pantomime, isn't it? Yeah, but that, that I saw that piece, and and I disagreed with it actually because you couldn't. First of all, we all don't work for the same bosses. Right. Second of all, it's impossible to to coordinate in real time. And most importantly, the administration, as I mentioned a moment ago, has packed the room with friendlies. Right. They've got all these like right wing blogs and talk radio people and all these conservative outlets filling the room. So if you don't get the question, the next one is going to Breitbart.com right. or LifeZet.com or something else, and those. People People are not going to be asking the question. So I saw that piece in The Guardian. I, I was not convinced. No, interesting that you say that. And what about the way that, uh, that that's going to work out then in the, in the future? Because, you know, all the co- complaints about the mainstream news outlets not being fair to Trump. Uh, he's accused many of them of being fake. I mean, is there going to be a shift in a way in, you know, who's kind of getting the, the, the stories, as it were? Well, I think access journalism is probably dead in in the States after this. I really do believe that. I mean, we've been so cozy for so long and we've pretended, uh, you know, having lived in the UK, at least there's a there's less pretense, I think, in the UK media of which side you're on Mm. or or not being on a side. I think we're going to start to lose that a little bit. You Mm. know, Trump, it came out today. Some of my colleagues in The Washington Post just put out a story that he literally dragged the National Park Service director into his office to try to get him to prove that he had a bigger crowd than Barack Obama in 2009. Mm. That's where we are. And yeah. so if he's worried about bad press, I think, you know, clearly he's got some other things that uh, these are these are distractions. Absolutely yeah. right. Listen, well, Jared, great to talk to you. I'm sure we'll be talking to you plenty over the course of the next four years as Mr. Trump uh, settles in further to the White House. Mm. This is Talk Sport. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. There will be a podcast coming out a little bit later yep. on. We're on the warm up, of course, tomorrow, one yep. hour earlier uh, due to all the FA Cup action. Uh, we're going to be on the air from 10 a.m. Uh, to midday. Yes. And we have a special guest, don't we? To I want to tell you about that. Yeah. Uh, during the second hour of the warm-up on Saturday morning, delighted to say that the legend that is Joe Cole, uh, who was uh, part of the great Chelsea team of the first decade of the 2000s, uh-huh. uh, who won the Premier League title, I think, in decade, five and six. Sorry? The last decade, then. The last decade, absolutely right. Mm. Won three Premier League titles, three FA Cups. I think it's 53 England caps. It might be 58. But anyway, he's going to be in the studio telling us all about... 
uh, his views on football, life, and everything in general. Yeah. Um, we're delighted to be and able maybe to, what he's going to do next. To welcome him. Yeah, and we're, mate, yeah, but he's playing football in America at the moment. He's he going to tell us all about that. Right. And uh, and how life is treating him. And okay. we're looking forward to it enormously. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, old man Guna says, uh, Birmingham has more miles of waterways than Venice. Yes. Although Venice is an interesting thing, isn't yeah. it? Because remember when we talked about yeah, how exactly. Venice, all the water had disappeared? Exactly. It actually turns out that it's, it's basically... It's low tide. It's tidal. Yeah, it's so about it's, twice I mean, a year it gets down like in that. In as much as they are canal, canals that have been sort of... The buildings have been yeah. built around them. That's right. It's more seawater than it is anything else. Yeah, and, and also, that, uh, the statistic, oh, more uh, miles of uh, canals in Birmingham. I mean, I've seen that over the years. But in fact, most of the waterborne waterways mm. in Venice are between... A series of islands than actually canals, if right. you see what I mean. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, it's let, seawater as well. That's why it, those yes. pictures which which said, oh, you know, all the yeah, canals have been that's drained. Right. Yeah. It probably happens quite regularly. No, it doesn't happen it's twice a year when mm. the tide gets out that low. Yeah. Now then, I'm going to ask you this, right? Do you know what a quack is? A quack? Yes. Uh, well, it's a term used to uh, refer to, say, for example, a medical practitioner yes. uh, who's not properly qualified, uh, I would say. Uh, That's yeah. how I would use it. Yeah, OK. Well, that might be a colloquial term, but in fact, I thought you'd know as a Scotsman yeah. that a quack mm. is the present that um, our Prime Minister, Theresa May, uh-huh. has taken to give to uh, President Trump in America. Q-U-A-C-K. Q-U-A-C-K. No, never heard it in that context. And, and what it is, is it's a double-handed bowl which you lift up, and mm. you'll have seen it in like films like uh, Braveheart and all that, and you sup from the double-handed bowl. Really? That's a quack, yeah. I haven't seen that in Braveheart. Yeah, I have. Really? Yeah, Which definitely. part of the film does he do that in? Oh, I can't remember, but it, it was in Braveheart. It not in Braveheart well, at all. Well, hang on, you're a Scotsman, you didn't know what a quack was. No, I don't. No, well, you see, that means you oh, I didn't you're... grow up in Scotland, I've told you that before. No, you're a plastic Scotsman, oh, of course. I'm not a plastic Scotsman at all. I the... don't know why you get so upset when I... When you say yeah. to, when you yeah. say things to me like, "Oh, you claim yeah. to be a yeah. Scotsman," yeah. it's just because I have some identity which you don't have. You spend all your life running away from your Welsh identity, no, pretending no. to be English. I've got Welsh identity because basically you're trying to pretend to be something you're not. Anyway, the quack, which is spelled Q U A I C H. Oh, so it's not actually spelled Q U A C K. It's it's phonetically pronounced. Phonetically... You told me it was spelled Q U A C K. No, no, it's Q U A I C H, as in as in Gaelic, so which Gaelic you should word. know something about. I don't you know. really know much about Gaelic, and no. it's pronounced. Sounds quake, right? It's the quake, quake. the quake. So it's yeah. not a quack. Yeah, it's a quake. So it's a quake. Yeah, but it's, it's spelled quack. quack, but it's a quake. And she's going to present uh, this to the president. Now, the, the it's interesting because the ancient artefact... Uh, is, this a, is this an old thing, then, that's dating back to some time? Or oh, it, I'm, I'm about to tell you. Made? I'm about to tell you. The ancient artefact, which hails from the 16th century, right... right um, is is designed to invoke the president's roots because, of course, his mother came from Turnbury, didn't she? No, I don't think she came no, from Turnbury. Lewis, no, Lewis in the Western Isles. No, she did come from Scotland, but she, not Turnbury. She, his mother came from Lewis in the Western Isles, OK? Or Trump Turnbury, as it's now known. Yeah, and she, uh, she left for New York aged 17 and has always spoken proudly of the Gaelic heritage that she had. Oh, yeah. But anyway, listen, what I was going to say to you was... Mm. Uh, this may be wasted on President Trump, who has never touched a drop of alcohol in his life. Okay? That doesn't surprise me. Yeah, and do you know why? Why? This is quite interesting. Go on. Just wonder why maybe your sister or my sisters didn't take the same route. But um, he's never touched a drop of alcohol because he saw the effects of alcoholism on his much older brother. Did he? As he was growing up and decided to uh, give it a, a miss right from an early age. OK. Well, it's... I mean, usually people don't drink for one of two reasons. Yeah. Either they've seen uh, mm. the alcohol uh, damage, the damage that alcohol has done to a member of their family. Yes. Or uh, there's another reason which I'm not going to tell you. What? I'm not going to tell you the other reason. What are you on about? Because it's not, if it's a family show, I'm not going to tell you. Well, I don't even have an no, idea what you're talking about, and I know most things about alcohol. Well, I would say you're an expert. In fact, uh, if we got uh, a quiz on alcohol, you'd no. probably get 10 out of 10. No, well, no, no. <laughs> but what I'm saying is this, this this mystery sort of ailment that alcohol brings upon people. No, I'm not saying that. Yeah. I'm saying there's two reasons why yeah. people don't drink. Yes, right? yes. The one yeah. reason I've given you, and the other one I can't give you. The one reason is because they're alcoholic. No, the one reason is because they've witnessed alcohol doing damage to somebody in their yes. family. Yes, But the other reason is, is nothing to do with that. Very mysterious. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, fortunately... I'm still looking for a picture of the Quake and Brave by the way. Yeah, f- fortunately, my uh, my uh, sisters never saw me imbibed to an extent that put them off alcohol. Well, obviously not. They both enjoy... Sue Ellen, by the way, ro- ro- as she's ro- become known. Robust socialising. I've now spoken yes. to more times in the last week Have you? than I've ever spoken Why to. Why is that then? Well, I spoke to her twice in the last week. Did you? Oh, you don't on. remember, do you? Uh, yes, I do. No, you don't. I do. When of did I speak I do. to her? 
You spoke to her on Sunday afternoon uh -huh. from her home, yes, where I was. while she was cooking for you. And, of course, from the game at Palace the day before. I didn't speak to her from the game at no, Palace, no. No, no, no. But no. It, was, it was on that it same mission. It was from the boardroom. Exactly. You rang exactly. her from there. Yeah, exactly. And insisted that I speak to her. Exactly. So she and exactly. I have now got a conversation going. Yes, good. Which is going to be very interesting, because you know what I'm going to do? What? I'm going to elicit information from her about you uh, and use it against you. No need to, mate, because there's no secrets in our family. I in bet any there way, are. In any You're the most way, secretive person I've ever known. I've, uh, I've never done anything wrong by the way really? by the way i'm told by you've never done anything wrong no i'm told by my spies in intelligence not necessarily naval that uh in payongayang oh yeah uh <laughs> there is a great deal of dissent against uh the fat boy what you mean the great leader kim jong-un yeah yeah kim jong-un yeah what, what do you mean dissent well apparently well, it won't be there for long will it you'll soon do away with that no apparently people are fleeing the diplomatic cause all over the world at an alarming rate oh yeah because you know that one of the guys here uh, decided to uh, to push off. Well, he, to defect. Yeah, to defect. Really? Yeah, yeah. No, I he, didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. He was. Uh, it was either trade ambassador or something. In the you know their their uh, embassy here is it's like a sort of semi detached house in Ealing or something. Isn't yeah, it? it's not in a very. Yeah. it's not in Belgravia. Yeah, really. that, that's right. Uh, Bayongayang is losing people hand over fist. Uh, the guy we're talking about is uh, Mr. Tae Yong Ho, and uh, he was he had. Is the this the guy in London? Uh, this guy in London, oh, right, okay. he had the, he, he he was the minister in the embassy in Acton. So Acton, it's not, yeah, it's not in Acton, trendy yeah. downtown Acton, near West London, it's near Ealing, and uh, his duties were to monitor the activities of defectors uh, both in London and around the world. Yeah. Now he's defected, mm. so he still has access to that information, right. and he's telling the West that mm. the defectors are happening all over the world. Oh, I see, right? Yeah, and uh, and and. But to be fair, I suppose uh, there's not an awful lot of interest in in what's going on in North Korea, is there? Because if there was, then yeah. something would have been done about it before now. Um, well, I think they're keeping an eye on the Americans. They haven't got a, They don't think they've got a nuclear bomb yet, but they want to make sure they never get one. But uh, what Mr. Tate. What Mr. Tae Yong Ho says is that he believes, apparently, or he, or, or they have uh, the Western intelligence has concluded from uh, after having conversations with him that uh, that um, old uh, Kim Jong Un yeah. uh, could be toppled by a people's uprising set off by an influx of outside information. Really, i.e., right, i.e., but he's got the army behind him, surely. Well, he's got the whole country behind him because mm. it's, a, it's a brutal dictatorship in which people go to re-education camps for things as petty as uh, not uh, saluting a newspaper that's got the picture of the great leader on the front of it and that sort of thing, you know? Yes. Imagine if we had to do that. Imagine if every time we saw a newspaper with a picture of Theresa May in it, we had to salute, otherwise you'd end up in a re-education well, camp. they'd love it, wouldn't they? I mean, all yeah. politicians hate the press, yes. in the uh, bottom yes. line. I mean, it's, it's yeah. a necessary evil yeah. that they have to sort of abide uh, uh, with and have to sort yeah. of live alongside. But I bet you any money. I mean, Trump obviously would like the press to be much less critical of him, uh, as would every other MP and, and yeah. uh, you know parliamentary figure that's ever been. I think Trump is the man who least cares cares about it, but is the most sensitive about it, if you yeah, see what I mean. I know. Most thin-skinned about it. Which seems bizarre, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does, yeah. Lots more coming up, including the Porky Quiz, of course, on yeah. Winston Churchill. This yeah. is Top Sport. Of uh, dissent in North Korea, there's quite a lot of dissent on Twitter. Uh, we are at the two mics, of course, at Mike Perrier, at I R O M G. A lot of people saying you're pronouncing quake wrong because yeah. it should be pronounced as in loch, yeah. right? So it should be quake, quake. Well, no, you mean the quack. Quack. No, no, it's it should not. be pronounced quake. I know what it is. You didn't even know no. what it was. So well, don't I've you start trying to give me lessons in well, the I'm, pronunciation. I'm, I'm merely passing on the advice of people who of, know more than me. Of right? a, a vessel. And he says this yeah. is quake. Pronounced quake like loch. Yeah. Pronounced correctly, Mike, you numbnut. Yeah. Uh, and one from uh, Kate who says, the quake is a silver bowl filled with a malt whiskey passed around like a peace pipe. Exactly. The quack. He's quackers. Exactly. Well, oh, no, you said, exactly. it was, you said you didn't say anything about whiskey. Yeah, I did. And I then did. Nico says, here you go, Porky. Next time you may want to check with the pronunciation dictionary. And he's got it as K-W-E-I-K. Quake. Quake. Well, quake. Well, yeah, but that's what I said. Well, apparently you've got it all wrong. No, I haven't got it wrong. I called it the quake, and it was the quake. Mm. Now, I'll tell you what I want to talk to you about, right? Yeah, go on. What's he going to give her, by the way? Um, well, perhaps, I... perhaps he'll give her some hideous gold sort of uh, no, uh, I statue think, of himself or something. I think that uh, Melania, who is uh, the first lady, yes. is into giving um, female 
like diplomats and stars mm. and all that. Boxes of jewellery from, from Tiffany's. Tiffany's. Well, she gave one That's box what I mean. of Tiffany's jewellery so far. To so, Michelle. Well, you don't know whether it's jewellery or not, though, do you? Well, it's from Tiffany's. It was Tiffany's well, can, box, wasn't it? Yeah, but you can get you know, lots of different things from Tiffany's. Yeah, you can, but it was that light blue Tiffany's box with the ribbons around it. Yeah, yeah. I but bought it, a lot of stuff there, actually, when I was there. Yeah, you keep telling us that. to various people. Yeah. Mm. You never gave me anything from Tiffany's. Nah, of course I wouldn't. You'd waste it on you. Well, no, lots now, of people bought my daughter stuff from Tiffany's when she was born, actually. Okay. But I don't think you were one of those people. Which right. Is pretty bizarre, considering you claim to be her god father was because you're not sorry you claim to be her godfather but you're not are you no but she wants me to be no she doesn't the point she no, wants she the official appointment no she doesn't want anyone who's as old as you calling her babe don't and be ridiculous. pretending to be her godfather don't be ridiculous now listen i'll tell you what i'll talk to you about right mm. and Go i find i find that i am repulsed and disgusted by this particular subject oh, yeah. and it's the it's a report that's come out which actually says and it's supposed to have scientific evidence that uh, nudists are good people Good people. Yeah. Well, some may be, some yeah. may not be. And, and, and No, but it's good for you. Nudity and, and being a nudist, wandering around naked, you know, without any clothes on, on beaches and all that, makes you a good person. Well, I mean... I find I, this revolting. You see, unlike you, I don't, make blanket, revolting. I don't make blanket judgments of any one particular group of people. This report, and it's from, believe it or not, it's from Goldsmiths University. Goldsmiths, right? yeah. Yeah, which is in London, isn't it? It's down in south-east London, yeah. South-east London. Not it's, far, uh, not many miles from New Cross. Yeah, that's right. It says, naturists are happier and more secure in their bodies, a study has found. Oh, yeah. And the scientists behind it concluded this could be because the simple act of taking off our clothes improves our well-being. Really? I mean, I find this a repulsive report with, you know, vile and unacceptable conclusions, OK? Yes. The question that they ask is this, um, uh, and this is from a guy called Dr West, who's been in charge of this report, OK? Yeah. What's his first name? What's West's first Adam name? Adam West? No, 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 he was Batman, wasn't he? No, that's he? right, yeah. Uh, Keon West. Well, there's another West, I've not mentioned him. Uh, Keon West. Keon. It sounds a bit like Key Seems West. Sounds like Twike. No, Keon is... Twike Ke- West. No, K-E-O-N, Keon West, OK? Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and Dr West says, the big question is this. What we need to find out is... What causes the surge of well-being in a nudist? Right. Is it the... Certainly not the cold weather, I No, imagine. no, no, no. Does it matter more mm. for the nudist to see a bunch of naked people... Yeah. ..or does it matter more to have a bunch of people see you naked, which gives well, you the thrill of being a nudist? Do you see well, what I mean? I mean, I suspect there may be people with both of those beliefs at different points in so, their nudist career, or, or maybe one or, one or the other. So these weirdos, these nudists, are wandering mm. around naked on the beach, yeah. and they get a kick out of seeing other nude people. Maybe. That's theory one. Yeah. Or... Do they get their kicks out of other nude people seeing them nude? You maybe, say to well, me. Maybe it's maybe it's both things. But in either case, I find it a, a really unpalatable subject, don't you? Um, not really, no. I mean, if people want to go nude on a beach and it's a nudist beach yeah. and it is uh, earmarked as such, then yeah. I think they should be allowed to do whatever they want. It says it's all about, you know, mm. uh, body appraisal and your uh-huh. own body shape. Yeah. So it says, for instance... Um, uh, when you are naked, yeah. is it that you're, you, you feel the freedom of the sun on your skin? Yeah. Or is it that when you see other naked people around you, you realise others are less perfect than the perfect yeah. body images? Who's saying this? Uh, this, this guy, West, oh, Ian yeah. West, right. that you see in the media every day. So, for instance, a woman who doesn't look like Kelly Brook, yeah. right? Feels better being on a you know a nudist beach, but I mean you can, be, a, you can no, get that same sense on any. Beach, hang hang so, on, you? with a load of flabby, you know, gross, overweight. Have you had a look in the mirror lately? Um, you know, repulsive eh? people. And if you, I mean, do you consider yourself flabby, gross, it, and overweight? No, I don't. No. What do you think you are? No. And if you walk around with well, all I'm these you a question. people with no clothes on, yeah. why do they have to have no clothes on? What's wrong with having a pair of shorts on? Well, if then it makes you feel. It well, makes you feel better. Why, I don't know why you're so weird about it. Mate, what do you mean? I'm weird. You are I'm, weird. Me? Yeah, you are. I don't walk around naked on beaches. What about that picture? With sand blowing around everywhere. Well, hey? if you don't want to walk around naked on no, beaches, you don't have to. No, I, Nobody's forcing you to. But it's not normal. Why isn't it? It's not normal behaviour. Well, it's not normal if it was to normal wear... Behavior, it's actually not normal to wear clothes, actually. You're yeah. not born wearing clothes, it's, are you? It's not You're no- born naked, right? Don't be ridiculous. Well, you are. You're well, not an you animal. Were. You're not an animal. Well, You're you a human. Out, you came out of an is, egg. It is. is t- well, that's the most ridiculous... 
That's the most ridiculous statement you've ever made. Why? Oh, it's not normal to wear clothes. Well, How come it? everybody does wear clothes then? Well, because it's a more of society. In some societies, people don't wear very many clothes. It depends on which part of the world you're in. Oh, you mean these tribes in the Amazon who've yeah. never been discovered and throw spears at they've helicopters? They've never been discovered. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> they throw spears How at helicopters. they've never been discovered yeah, of course if we know they don't about wear them. any clothes. Well, because can, they haven't well, been discovered. Well, how do we know about them then? Because we've got, like, one picture of them from a, so a low-flying aircraft or something. No, no, they haven't been discovered. Every, they every, run away. We don't know where they live. You don't but know anyway, yeah, but you know they're not wearing clothes, though. Well, Listen, why is it ridiculous? What about images of even cavemen? Yeah. Even cavemen uh-huh. wore a loincloth, OK? How do you know that? Because I do. I've seen the pictures. What pictures? The pictures of the cavemen in the loincloth. Well, who took them? They, it wasn't Lord Snowden, was it? No, you idiot. <laughs> it was... They were they were daubed on the inside of the caves, daubed. weren't they? Well, yeah. maybe they were just protecting their, uh, their, their modesty. Their modesty, perhaps. Yeah. That's a rubbish. It's it's completely unnatural what, to walk around naked. It, well, I don't think it there is. There's something wrong with you if you feel okay. Have you never walked around naked in your house? Never. Why not? I don't. There's nobody there. I don't care. What if it's really hot? Nakedness is. Uh, is, yeah, is see, a... see, you're screwed up about it. No, you've got no. some kind of complex about no, being no. naked. No, no, you're put ashamed of your own body. You don't want to catch yourself in the mirror. No, nakedness is a foul um, uh, being. You think nakedness yeah. is foul, and you think that's a normal thing to think. I, I, anybody who walks around naked's mad because, Why? well, because the human body has to have cover and protection. Not that's if you're in the about. privacy of your own home. Well, why would you want to walk around naked at home? Because it's really hot. No! Why would you want to do that? What's wrong with you? Because it's really hot. It's undignified. Have you never slept naked? No. Really? No, definitely not. Never? It's undignified. Well, if you're sleeping with somebody else. Well, of course you sleep naked if you sleep with somebody else, you idiot. So you have, then? Sorry? So you have slept naked? Yes, of course I have, yeah. But, I mean, I wouldn't go to bed naked on my own. Of course I wouldn't. Why no. Not? Well, like, it's mad. Yeah, it's Why crazy. Why is it mad? But anyway, we're not talking about that. We're talking about nature, right? Sleep, have you ever gone swimming naked? What? Swimming naked. No, never. Really? Never. Uh, so, try it sometime. so these uh, these naturists as well. Mm. Apparently, you know, one of the things they do when they're naked is they you know, they play things like beach volleyball. <laughs> well, you know why they do that, don't That's you? That's a bit embarrassing. Actually. Yeah, they. Knew, I mean, I'm yeah. not. You know, don't make the mistake that yeah. I'm in favour of nudist camps. Yes, because I can't think of anything worse. I think you are. I don't. No, I, I can't. I cannot think of anything worse. Yeah. And and the idea that some people take their kids to yes. these places, I find slightly odd. Yes. But I don't, on principle, think there's anything wrong with being naked on a beach, if everybody else on the beach is OK with that too. Yeah, well, you know? th- well, this guy, this guy uh, West, uh, the doc... Mr West. He says, to test uh, happiness derived from naturism, or whether happier people are just more likely to want to be naked, uh-huh. right? Yeah. Uh, he conducted an experiment... Uh, reported in the Journal of Happiness Studies, which I have to say is one of the few journals I do not subscribe to. You don't do that one? No. How about the Journal of Unhappiness? Uh, well, <laughs> there's a lot of them around. And and uh, and this uh, experiment took place in a Yorkshire wildlife park. People were psychologically assessed before and after going naked, and afterwards, majority reported it made them feel better. I mean... Well, what I say, well if that's what they're saying, then it must be true, right? Uh, honest to God. I don't know why you're so uh, sort of strangely obsessed he, with He it. says here at the end, he says, the issue is whether anyone will take any notice of my findings uh, that being naked and being around naked people mm. is good for the soul. I mean, what do you do, for example, if you find yourself on a beach, right? Yeah. Um, particularly in the south of France, I would say quite regularly, yeah. uh, where almost all the women are topless. What? Are you looking into my eyes? No. What, have you, what do you do when you I've find yourself... I've never been on a beach with a load of topless women. Really? No, I don't think so. Never ever? I don't think so. Why not? I've been on the beach with a few topless women. A few? Which I don't object to. You don't object to that? Because I think that the female bosom yeah. is attractive. <laughs> Well, surely, what not if it's flabby and horrible? No, no, no. The female bosom has a certain art well, what to if, it. What if you because it's curvature and well, all that kind about, of yeah, stuff? Yeah, but what about these people that you've been describing earlier? It's yeah. flabby and gross and overweight. Yeah, disgusting. What people. if they're topless? Well, they should get off the beach uh, before I sort of chase them off or something like that. But uh, this you doctor, West, standards. This doctor West uh, concludes by saying. Uh, I want people to take notice of my findings, but lots of people say fine, but I still won't do it. But you know, nudism is widely available and very, very cheap way of fighting body image dissatisfaction. Yes. So he's trying to make out, right? Trying to make. Oh, I did this report so help people with their body image dissatisfaction. Well, I mean, That's I've known nonsense. I've known people in the past, right? In the, mm. in years gone by, who yeah. you can tell are very, very embarrassed about the way they look because yeah. they go to the beach and they wear. 
you know, like some kind of almost full body suit. Yeah, so fine. That you, so that you can't see Who what they look like. Who did we see doing that recently? It was, uh, do you know what? I believe it was... Wasn't it Nigella Lawson? I was going to say, it was Nigella Lawson yeah. in a full body thing. That's yeah. right, yeah. Now, I don't know whether she was wearing that because she was surfing. I mean, I've or, always regarded know. her as a very attractive woman. So you wouldn't mind seeing her naked? Well, that's not the point, is well, it? Well, it is the point. It's not the no, point. No, my point is to expose your double standards. No. You yeah. quite like to see women the, the naked quest- as long as they look all right to you. The question you should have posed is, do you think she would upset people by going naked? Yeah. And the answer to that, of course, is no. Why not? Well, because she's very attractive and well, she's no, got but a if you're, great figure. Uh, hang on, if you're at a beach with your family, yes. you don't necessarily want some naked woman walking past, do you? Well, not for you with your family, I agree. Well, that's what I mean. So I to say that she wouldn't upset anyone yeah. is incorrect. No, but n- n- naturists and nudists themselves shouldn't be prading around with well, nothing on. It's as not well, right. What if, what if they look like Nigella Lawson? It's not, well, then Nig- you wouldn't object. If she was completely naked, I would, because yeah. I would think I would think that was uh, rude, offensive, really? and, uh, and not acceptable behaviour. Mm, OK. Well, I mean, I don't know why you wanted to bring all that up, but it's very, very interesting. And well, because I've seen the report, and I don't right, want this doctor down. to be influencing people into <laughs> thinking that n- nudism yeah. and naturism is normal. It's not. Okay. It's abnormal. Okay. If you're a nudist, you're an abnormaler. Abnormaler. This is talk sport. Is a foul beast. Try skinny dipping on Gosport Beach. No blood eration first. Oh, blimey. Don't you think must there be is joking. a Gosport, is there? Yeah, there is, yeah. Is there? Yeah, yeah. Must yeah. be covered in oil and horrible stuff. No, it's it? not. No, no, it's uh, shale. It's shale. Pebbles, yeah. Right. That sort of stuff. Yeah. Well, anyway, listen, let's talk to Sandra Lee. Indeed. Uh, we might get her view on uh, nudism as well. Yeah. Sandra, a very, very good morning and a happy belated Australia Day. G'day, chaps, and thank you very much. Mm. Yeah, it's Porky's great to been have ranting on, the show. on ranting on for the last ten minutes about how he hates nudists and uh, people going naked. <laughs> well, I didn't. Have you got any uh, nudist beaches in Sydney? We do. We've got a couple of very famous nudist beaches, actually, that you can see if you're cruising around on Sydney Harbour. Oh, really? And there are a lot of people who get yeah, there's a lot of people get their jollies by getting their gear off. My God, it's a very unnatural thing. You better for, be, uh, you better be careful me. of where those are. You better make, make yeah. sure you avert your eyes. Stay, uh, if you're gonna, back I'm, down I'm, there, I'm going to stay away from them because mm. I, I fear nudism because I think it's a bit of a sort of you know uh, antisocial type pursuit. But that's uh, that's for another day. Um, just talking about Australia Day, by the way, um, Sandra. I'm going to talk about uh, going to talk about alligators in a minute or crocodiles, crocodiles. even crocodiles. You haven't got any alligators, have you? Do you want to be talking about crocodiles? But um, I read somewhere over the last 24 hours that. Uh, the city of Fremantle has opted out of Australia Day and says it will no longer commemorate the Captain James Cook's landing um, in 1788. So is there a rebellion afoot? Well, there, there's been a bit of a rebellion for some time now. People, A lot of people are upset about it. They, a lot of people call it Invasion Day. Yeah. And um, some, some councils have taken the extreme politically correct line by saying, as Fremantle has, that they don't want to have um, an Australia Day celebration. But I think in the end they reverted um, to type and, and went ahead with it because the public just said, no, we want Australia Day. It's exactly. part of our tradition and we want it. Exactly. That's right. It's, it's, it's the majority over the, uh, as you quite rightly say, the politically correct now, of course, what we're very worried about, uh, Sandra, is we know all about the sharks that, uh, you know, you're keeping an eye on all over the place, but what about this man who's been dragged to his death by a 12-foot crocodile uh, on one of Australia's best-known tourist routes? It happened yes. in the Cahills Crossing near the Kakadu National Park in the Northern Territory. It did, and in fact, it's a, it's a renowned spot. It's absolutely beautiful up there, mm. but it is well known that it is inhabited by a load of crocs. And in fact, last year, 20 crocs were seen sunning themselves in exactly the spot where this bloke was taken last week yeah. as he was crossing the, um, the river. So there's signs everywhere saying, don't cross the rivers, you know, crocodiles are here. And yeah. um, they stupidly, him and two women, walked across it and he got taken by the croc. What would possess somebody to do that? Exactly. I mean, the, I mean did the two women who survived say they didn't care about the sign or they couldn't read the sign or what well uh, no they could definitely read the sign they were locals it wasn't as if they were tourists and unaware of the dangers that were there and so they took um they took the chance and you know he didn't survive it was just ridiculous you'd think that they would know better being local what i find a bit uh, harsh as well on the crocodiles is that apparently this croc the you know the one that dragged the man to his death was then hunted down by rangers or whatever they are and rangers and, yeah the park rangers oh, or whatever no, okay. and uh, and was then killed i mean don't they, don't, don't we accept the view that it's the natural instinct of a crocodile to you know to be a predator and if you put yourself in the crocodile's way it's your fault not the crocodiles 
Well, that would be my opinion as well. I don't mm. think that the crop should have been killed because it, it was just doing what comes naturally. And, um, you know, they were the people were crossing into the crocodile's domain. Yeah, that's what I mean, yeah. And, and, and if there were 20 of them sunning themselves there last year, it must surely be known as one of, you know, Australia's top kind of, Crocodile type communities, I suppose. Crocodile type communities. Yeah, yeah, for want of a better <laughs> word, because you know you'd be a bit. What else mad. would be a crocodile type community? Well, anywhere where there's a load of crocodiles, I you see. know, like the like the the pond in the James Bond film when when James that would Bond be a type stepped community. over six or seven of them. Mm. Yeah, but I mean, what I what I, what I'm trying to get to here, Sandra, is that does that mean every time a crocodile does what comes natural to it, you know, seeking food and predating, that uh, it, right. it, they they shoot them? <laughs> Well, no, uh, I haven't heard of any other cases like that, but um, this one does seem to be an extreme case. Mm. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens going ahead if other people take the stupid risk. Mm, yeah. It's almost, um, you know, you just, you, I just can't believe people would be so possessed to want to go across a crocodile-infested creek. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. No, uh, well, it doesn't, but, I mean, absolutely bonkers. people don't always think like that. Talking of crocodile-infested areas, what about this new Pacific uh, Treaty that, uh, that Donald Trump has thrown out, you know, the one that Barack Obama signed, which was meant to presumably involve Australia as as well as part of this kind of trade deal that would make it more difficult for China to become too powerful. What's been Australia's reaction to, to his first week in power? Well, I think all Australians are just sort of, um, and particularly politicians, are just sitting back and just waiting to see what happens next. Um, our Prime Minister has said that he still thinks there is a chance that the the, um, the pact, the agreement, will get up by using other um, Asian countries. But um, who knows if it's going to get up? It uh, doesn't seem to make any sense without America involved in it. Mm. And we have to f- not forget, too, that um, had Hillary Clinton won, she, she was also going to toss it out. Mm. It's, uh, it's going to be a strange old world over the next four years, I think, for all of us to see how that works out. Getting to another domestic matter, Sandra, I've had a report sent to me by, you know, my spies down there, that um, Australia's changing in the sense that young people who have been locked up for misbehaving themselves are now wrecking the jails in which they live. And recently, 15 teenagers broke out of an Australian youth detention centre and set off on a sort of O.J. Simpson-type chase with the police in pursuit. I mean, this is not the sort of thing that normally happens in Australia. No, and it's been happening in Melbourne, so in in our southern city, and these kids are absolute terrors. They're, you know, they're, they're some of the worst kids around. Yeah. And they broke out, as you say, and uh, and they took off and with the police in chase. And the police ended up having to stop the chase because they thought it was too dangerous. Mm. So, I mean, is this a bit of an unusual happening or is it happening more and more? Well, I don't know what's going on here. Australian youth now sort of lost the principles and the, the behaviour patterns of the, the normal Australian person or something. <laughs> A small percentage, a very small percentage, but they do seem to be getting a lot of press simply because they are making a lot of noise and doing a lot of damage to the jails. Mm. And uh, the Victorian government took um, took the extreme position by putting some of them, the older kids, who are sort of 17 and 18, into a, um adult prison, yeah. which upset a lot of people. And then they got pulled back. And when they were taken back, they decided to go on a riot and rampage. So once again, soft justice and bleeding heart liberals have caused this massive <laughs> problem within your society, yeah? <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. that's making that's made your day, really, isn't it? No, it hasn't You've made been able my to day. attack a load of nudists, and no, you no. found out that soft liberal justice has put some uh, communities in danger. No, no, not crocodile-like communities, no, mind you. No, no. What's I'm, the I... shark? Uh, what's the shark world doing at the moment, uh, Sandra? <laughs> I did a quick check. And there's not, no action in the shark area, which is good news. That is good well, news. Well, funny enough, I've uh, I've located a picture in my detailed research uh, ahead of talking to you, Sandra, and uh, apparently a little girl aged 10 uh, was on a surfboard at a place called Samurai Beach, uh, which you probably know near Sydney, and uh, a surfboard ran over a great white shark. Really? I, I haven't heard that. Yeah, well, exactly. You know, <laughs> this, this is a bit odd. And, Are uh, you suggesting Sandra's research is less thorough than your own? No, I'm not. But uh, <laughs> but what, what that's I'm, a shocking uh, accusation to make. No, what I'm saying is, even, where is Samurai Beach from you, Sandra? I have no idea. I've never heard of You've it. Never oh, heard right, of it. So, well, so, so this could in fact be a completely made-up story <laughs> about know. a made-up little girl on a made-up beach 
with a made-up shark <laughs> in a made-up piece of uh, newspaper journalism. And a, and Typical a, porky. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, it doesn't sound actually that uh, normal. Samurai for, Beach for, for ten-year-old girls on surfboards to surf across. Where did you get this thing story the, from? The the belly of a uh, a great white Where'd shark. Where did you get this story from? Well, it's it's something that I even have a pictorial uh, account of. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's have no, a look. no uh, you know, I managed to. And drag somebody this. managed to get a picture of her doing it as well. Yeah, exactly. You don't yeah. think this has been stunted up in any way? Well, I don't know, but I mean, look, if Sa- if Sandra doesn't know about it, I'm going to say it didn't happen mm. because not much happens in Australia that passes you by, Sandra. Well, that's right. I'm normally pretty good on this, but I have yeah. just done a quick Doctor Google, and um, and there it is. It's, you're right. It's um, a kid who's surfing over a, a great what looks like a great white shark, and oh, no. the beach, Samurai Beach, which I'd never heard of before, right. is actually in Port Stephens, which is about two and a half hours north of Sydney. Oh, really? Oh, that's quite a way away then. So it's isn't not really, it, really? In Sydney. It's not the sort of place you'd go for like Sunday lunch, is it? On a quick trip there mm-hmm. and back. Yeah. Yeah, no, he wouldn't. No, exactly. Mm. Well, Sandra, once again, it's been an absolute joy to speak to you. Thank you very much indeed for keeping us in touch with what's happening in, uh, you know, down under and all that kind of stuff. One of the better parts of the world, I would say. Absolutely it's right. always my pleasure. Have Thank a wonderful weekend, indeed. Sandra. Thank you very much indeed. Mm. Sandra Lee, they're reporting in from uh, Australia, uh, Sydney to be precise. Coming up next, though, we're going over to Philadelphia, uh, where Theresa May uh, is preparing to meet up with Donald Trump, the new president, uh, in a few hours' time. Indeed. This is Talk Sport. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. Coming up in the next hour, some postman pork is going to be around, of course. And also, yep. uh, we will have a look at the porky quiz as well. Uh, JPK has mm-hmm. tweeted at the two mics. He says, what exactly is a pre-de-dating crocodile? Is it a form of crocodile speed dating? What's this? Predating. I think that was a word that you used. Oh, predating. You, predating. Yeah, was you that... know, like predator. Yeah. Well, the is that a word. Yeah, the adjective to predator is predating. Are you sure? Yes, absolutely certain. I'm yeah. not sure that's. No, correct. it is honestly. Don't uh, worry. Matthew yeah. says this: if it says crocodiles on a sign, who in their right mind would go and swim in the creek? Not me. Yeah. Uh, they shouldn't kill them either. Yeah. Uh, no, they Tom shouldn't says, kill them. That's a terrible thing uh, to do. Porky's views on nakedness are straight out of Sid the Sexist quote book. No, they're not. Why is that sexist to say that I don't think that the human body is attractive in naked form? Well, no, because I in think... 99% of the cases yeah, of the you human concern. But you qualified it by saying that, you know, you didn't mind seeing topless women on the beach as long as they had nice figures. Well, all I said was I don't find them particularly repulsive yeah. if they, if you know, if they are of a decent physical form. But I just Have still... you seen uh, page three of The Sun, by the way? Page three of the sun. Yeah. No, what's that? Kelly Brook is uh, covered, oh, yes, in, yes, covered I, yes, in sand. I have, actually. Yes, I have, yeah. Covered in sand and naked. Uh, yes, but she's not exposing any of her sensitive well, areas of her body. No, well, she's, she's not. She's not. You see her leg. So and you, you don't see, object to that? So you see her um, her arm. You can see and, part of her breast. Yeah, but not all of it. That's the point. So, you know? so if you only saw nudists from the side, you'd be all right then? No, no. I mean, lots of women wear what you'd call low-cut tops and they don't expose all their breasts. Well, but lots of women on, on the way beaches they wear bikinis, which are very, very small. Exactly. So they might as well not be wearing them. Well, no, but they still are not naked. It's, it's the... I think it's the mental attitude of nakedness within yeah. somebody which I find a bit worrying. I see. OK? Uh, Why Martin would anybody want to parade around without any clothes on? Martin the Bricky says this. There's nothing better in summer after work than going home, stripping off and jumping into the pool. Hashtag got, nudist. If, yes, if you've got a pool, that's great. And if it's your pool and mm. you want to do it and you're not upsetting anybody or offending... Well, you said people I, walks I, around naked at home are weirdos as well. Well, I think they are. Well, he's not a weirdo. He's a Bricky. Yeah, but he's jumping into a swimming pool. Right. Therefore... So swimming naked's all right. If he wants to, that's all so right. So that doesn't that's make him right. a weirdo. If he wants to, that's all right to, by me. And if anybody else wants to walk around their own home naked, that's all right I for see. them. Oh, I just okay. wouldn't well, do it myself. Your tack, then. No, no, I wouldn't do it myself. David says this: We yes. were at a nudist spa in Europe, and the wife kept covering up her bits. She looked around and said, "I'm sorry, I'm English." Yeah, that well, is a very English attitude. Well, it's it? a very English attitude, and uh, and uh, yes, I have uh, admiration and respect for that lady. Mm. Definitely. OK. Yeah. Now, we're trying to get a hold of Tom Newton Dunn right now in Philadelphia. Yes. Uh, but she's not proving terribly easy. We're having a few technical problems. Did you go to Philadelphia? Uh, he went to, to Philadelphia with Theresa May. No, did you go to Philadelphia? Oh, did I? Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, I used to go to Philadelphia quite a lot. Yeah. yeah. What did you do there? Can you remember? Um, I did a whole bunch of different things. I mean, I yeah. once went to a wedding, actually, on the yes. outskirts of Philadelphia in a yes. Rolls Royce. Oh, yes. Which was a very interesting time. Oh, yeah, you told me about that. Yeah, yeah. I remember that one. Yeah. Mm. Um, but because it was so close to New York, yeah. I would. Look, I mean, if there was ever a story down yeah. there, you could just. You, I like you could Just jump on the train. I like. You know, and I used to whenever I went to Washington on the train, you go through it. Yeah. No, that's absolutely yeah. right. And and all the bars in Philly all played the Philly sound type music. You know what I mean? Um, well, I wouldn't say 
say that. I mean, some yeah, of them did. did. Yeah, they did. No, some of them did. The I mean, the thing that I found that was interesting about American music yes. was how much more differently kind of split up it was than ours. Because yes. In this country, you know, soul became a much bigger thing. Indeed. For white people in Britain than it ever did before for, yeah, uh, no, sure. for white people in America. Sure. I agree. Because it was kind of black, it was considered black music. I agree. Whereas, you know, white kids in this country were listening to soul. So you would find, I mean, even like the radio stations, yes. I mean, you wouldn't find a radio station, for example, playing the OJs, and then playing a song by Led Zeppelin. They were no, completely wouldn't. separate. You, you know? wouldn't, I totally agree. Now, uh, as it was Burns Night this week, yes. I decided to uh, commission some uh, research on Scotch whisky. Commission some research? Yes. You know, you were supposed to have a spoonful of whisky with your haggis, but you never even bothered yeah. getting your haggis. Well, I couldn't get one, could That's I? because you're a plastic Scotsman. No, I couldn't get one. Uh, but I'll tell you what, the whisky yeah. that we drank uh, not that long ago, mm. we did a little whisky tasting. Yes. I think there's a bottle of that whisky still lying around here in somebody's office. Because oh, really? I never took it home. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So well, I, mean, that's, I think it's the that. English one that we're after. OK. Now, if we, uh, you know, when we get in the Brexit mode and all that kind of stuff, yeah. and, you know, we get new trade um, uh, regulations, rules or procedures or whatever, the Scotch whisky industry is going to be one of the um, drivers of new international trade for us. For instance, did you know? Well, when you say us, you yes. mean presuming that England Great and Scotland continue to remain part of one major country. Well, the Supreme Court of Justice has already said you can't have special rules for Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales, haven't they? Well, what they've said is, is that you, yeah. they have no say in the Brexit situation. Exactly. But that does saying. not mean to say that following on from that, yeah. there might not be another independence referendum and that Scotland might not get independence. Nobody in their right mind in Scotland now would want Scotland to be independent, would they? Well, particularly uh, well, as, well quite a lot of people do. To, uh, particularly as a report came out today. Day saying that over the next ten years, and I, I touched on this uh, earlier when we were um, when we were talking about what was in our show. Yes, the, the price of a barrel of oil will never rise above a hundred dollars again. So I mean, when well, when you were telling me just before the yeah. show started, yes. that there's, there's a now what you regard as a surfeit of oil. There is there's the a surplus of oil years. in the world for the next hundred years uh, at least, right. at least, and then we'll find more oil. And the, the 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 globe is such a big place that we've only ever tapped about. Less than one tenth of a percent of all the oil, but of course it becomes on a question. Earth. Yeah, but it becomes a question of how difficult it is to get at, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah, because I agree. If it's no longer viable yeah. and commercial to actually go after it because yeah. it's too far away or it's too much under the sea. I agree. And all of that, they're not going to do it. No, but as as technology gets better, it becomes cheaper and easier to get it out. But anyway, uh, down to Scotch whisky. Thirty-eight bottles of Scotch whisky are shipped overseas from this country mm. every second. Is that right? Thirty-eight That's bottles quick, a second. It? 99 million cases uh, of whiskey were exported worldwide in 2015. Uh-huh. The last time they did a, a survey on it. Yes. 99 million. That's well, this is one of the million. reasons why the people of Scotland million. say, yeah. um, you know, if they were independent, that would be one of their biggest businesses. Yeah, exactly. So it's 100 well, million that's what cases. I'm so when you say exactly, yeah. you're yeah. agreeing with them. There's 12 bottles in each case. So that's 12, uh, that's uh, 100 million. That's 1,200 million. That's a billion. That's a billion bottles of whiskey uh, shipped out of uh, this country. How about that? Isn't that amazing? That is a lot of whiskey. In one year. Yeah. Laid end to end, that would stretch uh, 18,750 miles. How far would that go? Six times the distance between Edinburgh and New York. Couldn't they give us a slightly better uh, sort of estimate of well, how far Well, not really, because it's based on the Scottish whisky No, no I know that, but yeah. wouldn't it be better to say from Edinburgh to, I don't know, Sydney or something? Well, uh, you'd go sense. beyond Sydney, wouldn't you? Because the circumference of the world is 23,000 miles, mm. so you'd get actually three-quarters of the way around the earth. OK, well, that would be a better analogy yeah. for me and to understand. and that's just bottles of whisky. You're right. saying stretching it six times between Edinburgh and New York is yes. kind of stupid, I think. OK, how about this, which is a great statistic from my research, right? Mm. More scotch is sold in... In one month in France, yes, than they sell bottles of cognac mm. in a year. Is that right? Yeah. In, in so sorry, the first bit again. Right, more scotch yeah. is sold in one month in right. France. So yeah. take the month of January, yeah, and the the sales of uh, Scotch whisky. Yeah. That is more than in the in, in the whole of the twelve months yeah. that they sell French cognac wow. in isn't, France. Isn't in that year. interesting? Cognac's kind of gone out of favour a yep. bit, though. I mean, you very rarely yep. see anyone drinking cognac these days, do you? No, you don't. No. I mean, it's just not one of those. I mean, even I, I mean, I used to drink not a lot of it, but yeah. I mean, if it got to sort of late night after dinner sure. scenario in America, sure. sure. If I was sitting at a bar, that would be the drink I would have. Yes. And actually, now I'm more likely to have. Some kind of whiskey, sure. not necessarily scotch, but Abs- something. Absolutely. I'll just race through this. Mm. Uh, exports of the spirit are worth four billion a year, mostly to Scotland. Mm-hmm. The the second most popular tourist attraction in Scotland now yeah. 
is uh, Scottish whisky distilleries, right. which attract 1.6 million people a year. But do you remember the woman that we had on the show when we were tasting that other whisky from yes. other parts of the world? Yes. She was saying that quite a few you know, plate people are now setting up outside of Scotland. Yes. To sell to in the Lake to, District, to, to in places like whiskey, that. Yeah. yeah, but this is a this is a survey from 2015. Oh, you yeah. see, so it was still based there. So that is amazing. I think that's the second biggest tourist attraction in Scotland after Edinburgh. Right. Okay. Okay. And finally, at any one time in Edinburgh, there are 20 million casks. Right, not bottles, casks. There are 20 million casks of whisky maturing in warehouses in Scotland mm. at any one time. Right. I mean, that's amazing. It is a lot of whisky. This is a vast industry. Yes, of course it is. A vast well, industry. This is one of the industries that the independence movement is, is based on. I yeah. mean, forget about the oil, yeah. which people argue about because nobody knows precisely how much oil there is left in the North Sea yeah. and whether it would actually produce very much revenue depending on what price it's going to be. That's right. The whisky business is probably the biggest export business in the whole of Britain, really, isn't it? Well, uh, in Scotland alone, 10,500 people were in the whiskey business. Mm. That is amazing. That is a lot. That is it? absolutely amazing. You're not really a whiskey a connoisseur, a drinker, are you? I'm not you're really. Not, you're not it, keen on it. it no, it, it, uh, it just doesn't suit my system. I, the smell of whiskey I find very stimulating. The actual taste of whiskey really snaps on the back of my throat. You mm. know what I mean? Yeah. And, and if I drink anything like, uh, you know, three or four measures, yeah. I will feel ill the I next have to day. say, the day that we did that whiskey tasting, yes. um, we then went for a, a post-show um, conversation, we did. shall we say, yes. which inevitably involved a couple of pints exactly. of beer. Yes. And I then had to go out for dinner with my daughter. That's right. And by the time I was at the restaurant, I have yeah. to say, I was getting slightly... Um, shall we say, blurred. Inebriated. Yeah, no, not particularly inebriated, inebriated but just I the amount, say. because yeah. some of that whiskey that we tried was so strong. Yes. And so harsh. It was. Especially that stuff from India. It was. Which was like 54% free. Something like that. It was By the way, strong. somebody text, uh, tweeted, the back of your throat. Somebody tweeted me earlier in the week, I meant to mention this to you. Yes. That they, that with some beer, yes. which is something like 45 or 50% proof, a and they wanted us to do a beer tasting. Yeah. Well, you know, we're always up to try and help people out if they're producing new alcoholic drinks. Yeah. We can taste them. Uh, Burmy says this, Enjoy listening uh, as my babies are in hospital here in Bermuda and can't sleep. I oh. uh, listen to all your podcasts, but they are uh, proper... Proper quality, he says. Yeah, well, that's very kind of you. Thank you very much indeed. Which is very we nice believe indeed. in quality. Now, Red has sent us one which you won't like. He says, I'm listening to you boys naked today, just saying. Really? Yeah. Oh, it's not a nice image, you know. Mm. Nakedness is not a great image, honest and to God. David says, I've become physically ill with unwanted thoughts of MG roaming the homes and waterways of the UK naked. Exactly. I don't know why you're You're suggest- making people feel ill. Well, I don't know why, because oh, I didn't say I did that. Very image of it. My I not, God. I do not roam the homes and waterways uh, of the UK naked, David. Uh, but if that, if that turns you on, mate, uh, uh, you go for for it. Pass the sick bag, Alice. Mm. You go for it in any way you want. Donald, uh, who's in Edinburgh, says it was the father taking pictures of their child surfing. Mm. He saw the shark whilst viewing the back of the camera and then sou- shouted, Shark! Well, yeah, you would, I suppose. If, he, if you know, if a, if a great white is suddenly floating around a few feet away from your ten-year-old daughter's surfboard, uh, I would say that's a moment to panic. Uh, Stephen says, I agree with yeah. you, Porky. People who go to nudist beaches should be kicked into piranha-infested yeah. waters. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Well, I mean, not literally, obviously, but I, I really do think <laughs> that, uh, you know, there should be some laws against it. Now, uh, Tony has done a very honest. nice little Photoshop job of you yes. uh, on a, nu- a nudist beach. Oh, my God. <laughs> but at least I'm not naked. Looking out, well, thankfully not, no. Yeah. Looking out for Nigella amongst yeah. the abnormalers, he says. Oh, yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm not, uh, honestly, I'm not with it at all. I just don't know, I don't know people to defend it, really, because, I mean, those who do it must know that they are odd and not that, you know, not, they don't they don't uh, follow society's mm. normal civilised pattern. Yeah. And, uh, and, and OK, so they've decided to do it on their own back, but why people support it, I've no idea. Well, I've got, I mean, the problem I've got with nudist camps and beaches and all that is that people yeah. doing things, generally speaking, as a group, yes. just doesn't really appeal to me. I mean, how yes. about this little gloaty sock? He says, I used to manage a supermarket internet delivery department and all the drivers used to try to avoid delivering to the nudist camp. Yeah, I bet they because did. Because that would be difficult, wouldn't it? Well, it's it's so embarrassing. Well, I mean, literally, where do you put your eyes? Mm. Where, if, you, if you're told you've got to do business well, with like, nudists was it, What was that or Peter a Sellers camp? movie? Was it one of the, uh, the Inspector Clouseau ones where he had to end up in a nudist camp and he had a guitar and he had to sort of cover himself with uh, a guitar? I'm not sure. Do you remember that? Uh, not really. You must have seen all the Pink Panther films. I probably right? have, but I, I must admit... You don't I remember that? I can't quite remember that sequence or that, uh, that particular No, I mean, sketch, I think... No. I, mean, I, I, I mean, I don't yeah. think there's anything wrong with individuals yeah. being naked yeah. in whatever situation they want to be naked in, but it's, yeah. it's, it's the kind of collective bit about it that worries me. Yeah, slightly. well, well, yeah, like very, very much so. Like playing table tennis and beach volleyball and all that. Well, the beach volleyball thing, you know, people's... 
you know, bodily parts bouncing around, flapping about, you know. I mean, it's just really pretty repulsive stuff, mm. isn't it? Well, I can certainly imagine why you would say that. Yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, we haven't got a lot of time, but yeah. coming up very shortly, we're going to do uh, the Porky quiz. Uh, we're going to do Postman Pork as well, so I hope you've got some stuff ready for oh, that. Oh, I have. I've got a load. Uh, we are very, very close to that yep. indeed. This is Talk Sport. Hello, this is Tim Vine on Talk Sport. It's Mike Parry's post bag. I can't wait to see what's in there. Postman pork, postman pork, I eat my chips with just a fork. Cos then I can still talk. So there it is. That's great, The worst isn't it? jingle in the history of Talk Sport Radio. I don't think so. Look, I'm going to get straight into it because there's so much here. That's and very I want good. you to keep writing, please. If you want to feature in Postman Pork, you write to uh, Porky Parry yes. at Talk Sport. Yeah. It's 18 Hatfields, yes. H A T F I E L D S. That's right. Which is London S E 1 8 D J. Very right, impressive. That's, that. uh, that's very well sorry. done. Should it not be Postman Pork rather than Porky Parry? Yeah, yeah, Postman Pork. Yeah. yeah. Right, open the first one. Here we go. All right, this letter is from Hi Mike and Mike. So it's the two of us, what's but it is the, addressed uh, to Post from Paul. What's, it, what's on the envelope? Because uh, I like to always like to know where it's come from, uh, if you uh, can tell. Well, uh, well, Croydon, Croydon Mail Office. Croydon. Croydon's in South London. Yeah. So here we go. This is from a listener, but oh, it yeah. doesn't give it. It says, I thought you might be interested in this article from this week's Dorking Advertiser. Oh, yeah. OK, One thank you very much papers, indeed. Right? Now, here we go. I'm going to open this now. And, in fact, the headline says, Fleet Street Snapper dies after life spent capturing the world. So, unfortunately, this is about somebody who's dead. All right. But, nevertheless, we will pay tribute to them. This is somebody we know. It says, photographer Bob Barkley has died, age 70. I've never heard of Bob. Bob who? Bob Barkley. Bob Barkley. Bob no, Barkley. I'm not sure I know It him. says, an ex-Fleet Street photographer from Mole Valley, which uh, I know is in Stockbroker Belt, Surrey, uh, who pictured the Queen, the Beatles, Jimi Hendrix, in a 50-year career has died, Robert Barkley, known as Bob. Well, you would be if your name's Robert. Robert, you know, yeah. yeah. Robert Barkley, Bob Barkley. Bob Cat Bob. Yeah, lived in Holmesbury, St Mary, and died on January 6th after a four-year battle with cancer. It's very sad. Yeah. And uh, we're uh, terribly sorry to hear of Bob's demise. I, I wasn't actually a colleague. Oh, here we go. Mr Barkley spent the bulk of his career working for the Express Group. Well, he didn't when I was there, actually. I'm not trying to be unkind, mm. but I... Does uh, it say what years, perhaps, it was uh, before your time? It could have been before my time, because I knew all the photographer guys all very well indeed. Um, yes, round about sort of 72 and all, all that sort of time, OK? OK. Um, so he would have been a contemporary of people like um, Brian Vine and those Yes, guys, I right? suppose he would have been, yeah. yeah. Picture of him here waiting outside the Marine uh, base where uh, Prince Edward joined up but only stayed for a, a few weeks before he copped out. And I have to say, uh, there's a few faces that I don't recognise. So a bit before our time, but he went on to work for the Press Association and the Daily Telegraph. Well, well that's so you nice... should have known him at the PA then, no? Well, I think, it, I think again, it was in the 70s, and oh. I didn't get a Fleet Street until uh, the 1980. So, listen, thank you very much indeed, listener, whoever you are from Croydon. That's nice to be able to pay tribute to a former colleague from Fleet Street. Even though you've never heard of him. Even though I've never heard of him, <laughs> but I'm sure he was a great guy. Yeah, I'm sure he was. Because most of them were. Right. Yeah. Right, here's another one. Postman Pork, Talk Sports, 18 Hatfields, the exact address, London SE1 80J, Prioritary. So it's come from abroad. What, Prioritary? Pri- Prioritary. Yeah. Uh, Class Breffa. So I think it's what? come from like Austria or Germany or somewhere. Class Breffa. Oh, it's Peter, S- Stockholm, Sweden. Class Breffa. Class Breffa. What does that mean? Well, I don't know, but it's oh, uh, class Swedish. Class Breffa, like first class, I Yeah, think, that's right. That'll be it. Yeah, Class, class Breffa. Yeah, that's the way you said it. Class Breffa. Right, OK. So yeah. Peter from Sweden is. Uh, get into the swing of things by sending us mail from uh, that wonderful country, uh, the home, of course, of ABBA and the Volvo car. And uh, opening this now, here we go. Uh, I'm just going to open the... Thank you very much indeed. Oh, he's, for some unknown reason, sent me a picture of a filthy old caravan. A so, filthy old caravan, uh, oh, yes. this now to MG. I Can see, you yes. make out what that is? Uh, well, it, well, I'm not an expert yeah. in caravan mm. sort of makes, but it lo- looks like one of those uh, sort of two-wheeler jobs it from is. the 70s yeah. with basically one room. That you hatch onto the back yeah. of a full Cortina or it's something. the sort of thing yeah. you had in that place in it, North Wales, isn't it? Well, no, uh, mine was better than that. Anyway, caravan let's, knocking shop. Let's find out what the uh, correspondence with it goes. Yes. 
So it's, it's, it's from Peter, and he starts off by saying, well, because obviously, of course, Sweden is the home of Sven. It is indeed, yeah. Svenny. So it says, uh, I'm sending this letter from a snowy Stockholm. I was here listening to your fantastic show, which he writes in capital letters, by the way. Fantastic uh, show, which I always promote via word of mouth in these parts. And by the way, I suddenly feel very sorry for you in your hopeless pursuit of a bit of uh, good, old, honest Rogerisation. Right. Well, that's very kind of you, Peter, but mm. don't worry, we have that under control. He says, in close, you'll find a photo. This photo shows a caravan of mine. I feel I can be put to greater use elsewhere. Considering the last successful Rogerisation period in your life involved you pretending to be Noel Edmund's brother, then swiftly proceeding to luring your grotesque victims to an old mouldy caravan you had stashed away in a field somewhere, I'm offering you this caravan as a gift in the hope of you improving your clearly horrendous rogering ratio. All you have to do is to get over to the beautiful city of Stockholm and it's yours for nothing. Uh-huh. It's the least I could do to give something back for all the great entertainment and last you two have delivered over the years. Very kind. Peter. Well, Peter, thank you so much indeed. It is a, a horrible, uh, grotty old caravan, mm. but in order to thank you for doing it, we're going to take a picture of this caravan. Shall we do that? And we're going to put it out on the two Mike's uh, Twitter okay. account. Thank you very much now. indeed. Right, I've got to get Does to Peter the mail. Does Peter give so you his, uh, his Twitter handle so we can put him in the Twitter? No, there is no Twitter handle, I'm afraid. OK. But uh, here we go. I'm, uh, now, this is a spongy bag package, so to speak. I'm opening a it now. Spongy bag package? Spongy bag package. It's back to nudist together, isn't it? Right, here we go. There's a letter inside with something else. Oh, here we go. Oh, I can't believe it. What? I am so happy. What's that? You won't believe it, but before I even open the letter, mm. somebody has sent me mm. a Chester Football Club woolly hat. Oh, there you go. That's absolutely fantastic. A beanie hat. Uh, well, it's not. It's like a woolly hat, isn't well, it? A beanie a be- hat, I suppose, called a, yeah. It's called a beanie hat. Well, that is absolutely true. What does it, it say something? on the front? Uh, it says... Chester Football Club. Oh, is that it? Well, OK. I thought it's, it had, I just, had some Latin at the no, bottom. No, no, no. Uh, what, got, is the, uh, what is the motto? What's uh, the picture? Uh, uh, it's uh, like a, a wolf's head, I think, isn't it? Or over a crown. Uh, could be. Yeah, wolf's head over a crown. Is that like something that. to do with Henry VIII? Could be Henry VIII, so indeed. Wolf Hall. Uh, wolf Hall, yeah. Could is that anything to do with yeah, that? Yeah, could be, could be. Good thinking. Right, well, let's... I presume you know what yeah. the crest of Chester Football Club is. Well, they've changed it over the years because it used to be called Chester City, now right. it's called Chester. Well, you'd be able to wear that without uh, proving your disloyalty to Everton. I Well, if I'm in the air, in Chester, I will. If I go to the Chester Grove, I should think it'll suit. Oh, yeah, they'll love you there with yeah, the yeah. beanie hat with, coming with, in. With the, the Chester football, beanie hat on, yeah. Football club. Anyway, let's see what this says. Right. Uh, dear Porky, this is a little gift from a fellow Cestrian and Chester FC fan. A thanks for being a man of the people and an intellectual leader uh-huh. of the great unwashed. That's fantastic. Thank you, Paul. Was he sure about this? It says, all I ask is a picture of yourself wearing the hat sent on Twitter to my Twitter handle, and he gives the Twitter handle uh, at PK the Apprentice. Keep up the good work, fellas. Much regards, Paul K. Frodgham. P.S. This hat costs ten pounds. So when is my birthday <laughs> on February the second? Can this be my payment for a shout out? Well, we'll try and remember that, Pete. We have a lot of obligations, but it's very kind of you. We will definitely get a picture and get it out on Twitter. And thank you for your generosity. So that's another picture I've got to put out. Well, that's, that's I two think pictures so. I'm yeah. going to do. Well, now. I think so. Yeah. Right now, come on. Let's give it. Now this is a big package here. Uh, it says here to Porky Parry, this comes from. Uh, it doesn't say actually, but I'm going to. Oh, yeah, hang on. No, wait a minute. Let's open it. Uh, this is a big package, OK? Yeah. And uh, I have to say, a lot of people put a lot of sellotape in these packages so they don't burst open on the way. That's right. Which means it takes me a little bit longer to get them open, but don't worry, I'm in charge of this one. Right, you'll hear now I'm ripping into it. Ripping into it. Here we go. Go on. From China. Our producer. From China? Who said that? I thought you said it was from China. No, no, it's not from China. Oh, look, you don't believe it. I can't believe it. I've been sent a Victor Annual. A Victor Annual? I remember I, ven- I mentioned the Victor Annual the other night. I don't remember that, actually, no. I did. We were talking about we were talking about all the best players going to China, uh-huh. and I said, in my Victor Annual, I remember a story about a bloke with a spaceship who went and kidnapped all the world's best footballers oh, yes. and took them out. Yes, I remember that, yeah. Well, I can't believe it. This is, is, is so said, kind. This is so kind. I'm 50th anniversary uh, this edition. to old MG. Thank wow. you so much indeed. There's a card it's got with gorgeous it. Gus. Gorgeous Gus. Let Tough me this of card. the track. Here we go. This is Morgan from Morgan the Mighty. Now this is another one from uh, Croydon in Surrey, and it's from a I think he's a correspondent, Roy Dracula. Oh, Roy Dracula. It, yeah, yeah, he's he's, he's a, written just before. It, yeah, dear Mike, as a boyhood reader of the Victor comic, I thought you might like this copy of the best of the Victor from my archives. It features, amongst others, Morgan the Mighty, Gorgeous yeah. Gus, Alf Topper, the Tough of the Track. Many of your flocks see you as a modern day political and cultural Alf Topper seeking truth and justice on a diet of fish fingers, giant crumpets, Red Bull, and spinach if a 
available. Long may you continue. Best wishes. Roy, I can't thank you enough. Now, the ins- inside yep. this annual the yes. forward is written by Andy McNabb. Andy McNabb. It wouldn't be the same Andy McNabb. Of course it? it is. Of course it is. Really? Yeah, there's only one Andy McNabb, mate. Yeah, I think sure. He's, I think, yeah, I think he's, he, he owns that title, doesn't he? Right, listen, I've got time for one more parcel. And is, and by the way, there's so much mail, I'm not going to get to it all. You'll love this, right? There's Keep loads, please loads sending of in, in here. Please sending in the, uh, the, the, uh, the letters, the parcels. Here's another one, Postman Pork. It's a book. Uh, the book is The Secret Race, uh, Inside the Hidden World of the Tour de France, Doping, Cover-Ups and Winning at All Costs. Um, it says it's the winner of the 2012 Book of the Year. Uh-huh. And, of course, uh, this is a prudent listener because it's already... It's got, he's left on the sticker on the front which says what, Mike? It says half price. Half price, absolutely. Yeah. doesn't matter. There's nothing wrong with half price. And then a letter here to Postman Pork. This comes from, well, it's a chap called Danny Elliott. Don't have an address, but I have a Twitter handle. It says, uh, Dear Porky, I remember before Christmas you were having a brief discussion regarding doping and cycling. Notably, Porky's knowledge on the subject was definitely a bit patchy. Yes. Please see and close the copy of Tyler Hamilton's award-winning book, The Secret Race. He was part of the US postal cycling team during Armstrong's doping years. And mm. he goes on to f- tell me about that. I would that. say you can read that and, and, and bump up your knowledge, then. Bump up my knowledge. It said, this should help fill Porky's knowledge gap in the subject, and maybe you could even devote a Porky quiz to the subject. I'm predicting not out of ten. Very unkind, that, Danny. Keep up the top work. You have the best show on the radio, and I hope to see you both live again later this year in the big smoke. Regards, Danny. Danny, that is so kind of you. Thank you very much indeed. Very kind. Well, I have to say, I mean, that's I... quite a haul. Oh, quite so a haul. You've got a Victor annual, yeah, picture of a Grotti annual. caravan, yeah. and another book to read about cycling. Yeah, and also don't forget my beanie hat from Chester and FC. And the beanie hat. I mean, so you managed to turn uh, uh, this into uh, a way of well, collecting a lot of freebies. Well, I, I, well, well. I, I never asked for it, but I mean, I'm with a letter from Sweden, of course. And yeah. I just want to thank everybody for your kindness. Is it and Peter Stemple, by the way, does he say? Uh, no, no, no. He the says Peter from Sweden, I mean. Uh, I think it's Peter Stemple. Uh, I think Twitter. it might be a PS. It might be a PS. PS? Yeah, he signed it just with his initials, you yeah. see. Oh, well, that'll be him. Yes, could be. That'll be him. You think we've got him? We found oh, well, him. We'll tweet that out shortly. Lovely. Oh, this is joy. Joy, joy. Look how happy he is when you send him something nice. Oh, absolutely. He Love is it. Postman Pork. This is Talk Sport. Love it. Sport, we are the two mics. Now, that was Postman Pork, of course, and uh, we'll be having a look into those books that came in. Let me have a look at that cycling book, actually, of course. because I got the sense yeah. that it might have been written before Lance Armstrong actually um, yeah. gave his confession yes, to okay. um, Oprah Winfrey or whoever it was he gave it yeah. to. And I, I'd just like to say as well that a correspondent from Chester who sent me the uh, hat, of which we've just taken a picture... Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember who it was. Uh, sorry, sorry, got so much mail here. Uh, it's from Chess. It's from Frodham, and Frodham. Uh, I've told you about before the um, the Helsby Frodham Hill, uh, just outside Chester. There, I went to school in Frodham. Uh, yeah, that was Paul from Frodgham. Paul, thank you very much oh, okay. indeed. All right, we'll send that picture out in a minute. Indeed. Uh, James says this, despite the fact that Mike Perry's singing Postman Pork in the wrong key and the timing is off, it is still brilliant. Yes, I think so, yes. Um, I... And Matthew says, uh, yeah. I can't wait for the Porky quiz about Churchill. Uh, will Porky fight them on the nudist beaches? <laughs> it won't be fighting on the nudist beaches, mate, but we'll fight them on the beaches. We'll fight them in the hedgerows. We'll mm. fight them in the country lanes. We'll fight them in the streets. We will fight them. We will never surrender. Uh, Ooh, Tim no says surrender. this, why don't you do listener phone-ins anymore? Remember the guy who phoned in about sharks a few years back? It was hilarious. I don't remember the guy who phoned in about sharks. No, I don't, I'm afraid. No. But, uh, I mean, we talk know. to listeners on the phone sometimes if they call in. Yeah, of course we and do. And they're not too uh, off, the, off their faces to, uh, yes. to make any sense. That's right, yeah. Uh, but uh, we yeah. don't do it an awful lot, as no. we said. No, that's true. Mm. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, lots more tweets and, and texts coming in as well. Yes. Um, here's one from, uh, where are we? Uh, here's one about Andy Jacobs, okay. uh, which is from uh, somebody called Sales Shark, funny right. enough. He says, get Andy Jacobs from H&J on, as he has some great nudist stories and went out with the same girl as his granddad. Went out with the same girl as his granddad. Who, who did? Uh, Andy Jacobs. Andy Jacobs went out with a girl who had also romanced his grandfather. That seems a bit unlikely, doesn't it? Very unlikely. Mm. I don't know what that's all about. Very strange. That can't be true. Well, the suggestion is that he once spent, yeah. spent some time as a nudist, though, so maybe he's got some stories to tell. Yeah, well, there's one here. I watched a programme, Porky, on Channel 4. There's a guy at some Lord's estate that does the gardening naked. Oh, yeah. Does anybody know where it was? No. Sounds like you should cover that on Porky Vision. Yeah, ab- ab- absolutely. Um... Uh, it says here, to the two mics, I'm not a fan of nudist, Porky, but each to their own. After all, you're an Everton supporter. 
Yeah, what's that going to do with it? Well, I suppose he's saying each to their own, as in he does. He's quite happy to tolerate you, even though you might be something, somebody that he wouldn't otherwise tolerate. I think he was trying to in, uh, sort of tell me then that there is uh, there is a branch of the Everton Supporters Club who are nudist, but I'm sure that's not the case. I don't think he's saying that. No. At all. No. I'll tell you a story I saw that I yeah. thought might interest you, talking about things being half price, right? Apparently, yes, sales, half price, yes. sales of luxury Swiss watches yes. have dropped by 10%. Luxury. I didn't know there was such a thing, to be honest. What do you mean? Well, uh, I, you know, I take a bit of an interest in watches. I like having a decent watch, but I've never heard of luxury Swiss watches. I've heard of luxury. Uh, sw- uh, oh, do you say Swiss or Swiss. Swedish? Swiss. Oh, Swiss. I'm sorry. I thought you said well, Swedish. That's where Swiss watches are made. Yeah, sorry. I'm getting confused with, Swe- with Sweden. Well, because you got a, a note from yeah, Peter I did, in Sweden. Yeah, yeah Swiss I watches. I know they both start with SW. Yeah. But they're now, two very different countries. But there is a thing called the Swiss Watch Federation. And what's this put down to? And do you know what they say it's because of? No. Because of China's official crackdown on bribery. What does that mean? The, the well, pe- it means because you, you know, there yeah, are now see, yeah. much more strict okay. rules about gifts okay. and bribery and all that sort of thing in okay. China. Nobody's buying as many Swiss watches well, to give people. That's really interesting. Do you remember the story about FIFA and the watches? I was about to say, Greg Dyke, of course, at mm. one time had to... Oh, that image has just appeared on one of our internal monitors. Which look. image? The image of the little 10-year-old girl on the uh, surfboard oh, right, okay. surfing near the uh, the Great White. Uh, no, what I was about to say to you was that uh, Greg Dyke, in the end, returned a watch worth 32,500 quid yeah. to FIFA mm. because it was given to him as a gift at, you know, some, I don't know, some World Cup gathering or something like that. Yeah, was it not one of the FIFA kind of um, yeah, committee an- meetings? Annual meetings yeah. or something, yeah, something like that. And, right. and I have to say, that is an amazing statistic. If China now wields so much influence in the world that the, the price of a luxury Swiss watch drops when the demand from China... Uh, dries up. Mm. That is quite incredible. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, here's one from yeah. uh, Becky who says, I hope uh, HM Revenue Customs don't listen to Postman Pork. Pork mm. will be paying tax on all his gifts. Uh, well, he will have to do that. Well, a £10 hat, I think you're allowed. I think there's a certain amount of allowance. So right? I, I can't see that. That's, I mean, you know, I'm not exactly getting like a Lamborghini, am I? Although if anybody well, wants to donate next. one, yeah, you know, yeah. Somebody yeah. will send you a set of keys. Yeah, you never yeah. know what they're for. Yeah, that's yeah, right. so let me go back to this watch story. The Federation of the Swiss Watch Industry said that in 2016, watch exports fell by more than 2 billion Swiss francs. Yes. Which is £1.6 billion, pounds, right? The Chinese bought far fewer luxury watches. Yeah. Uh, and apparently in Hong Kong and China, the percentage of, of, of a fall has been 25% and 22% respectfully. Really? In the four years since the new Chinese president announced a campaign against rampant corruption. Golly. I have to say, that is a big golly. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm. Um, I've come across a tale, an amazing tale, actually, about um, a young lady who reared an emu. A what? She reared an emu. You mean an emu? Uh, an emu. And, but Not an emu. But the, uh, the RSPCA have taken it away. Why? Well, it's, a, quite, a, it's quite an amazing story. Um, Charlotte Harrison ha- had an emu egg in an incubator. All right. Where did she find that? She bought it on eBay. That's a joke, right? No. Emu on eBay? Yeah. She bought... Uh, she she bought... sent somebody an email. No, she bought an emu <laughs> egg... Put it in an incubator. Right. Uh, Why, though? Watched over it lovingly for seven weeks. Well, hang on. Where did the emu egg come from? I mean, I know that's an obvious question. Yeah. I mean, spe- spe- specifically the one she bought. I mean, who has an emu egg? Well, I don't know, but this is quite... Rem- I'm getting to that now. Right. She She hardly went to sleep for seven weeks because she'd worked out from looking at some books or something. Yeah. That's how long it would take the emu egg to actually incubate yes, and hatch. gestation period. And she learned the to mimic the squeaks of an adult emu bird uh-huh. to make the unborn chick inside the egg feel like it was being nested by uh, being its Being reared mother. by its mother, yeah. Yeah, yeah, OK. okay. Right. Uh, when the baby emu was born, it then thought that this lady, Charlotte, was her mother... Followed her around everywhere, but now her role as a surrogate emu mum has hmm. been cut short. RSPCA inspectors uh, came to learn about uh, the existence of this pet and yeah. took it away. Well, I mean, they get quite big emus, don't they? It's not like the sort of thing. It's not like you can't keep it in a cage. Well, you? obviously, it was only little when it was born, and it says. Yeah, I know, but when they grow up, is what I'm saying. Well, I, I, I feel sure that she sounds like a responsible young woman. She would have made provisions to have the emu put into... It says a, a grown-up emu will, will sometimes weigh as much as 40 kilograms. And it can be six feet high. Yeah. 
Well, uh, you can't really keep it in the living room, can you? Yeah, but it was only little at this stage. Anyway, they told her that her three-bedroom home was completely inappropriate as the bird could end up six feet tall, could weigh ten stone once yeah. fully grown. Right. So Miss Harrison um, uh, was given the emu egg, bought for £25 from eBay as a gift from her father last November. Right. She cared for it for 47 days, right? There's that number again. That's it, yeah, it certainly is. 47. Yeah, nearly seven weeks before it hatched. But when she started... Where does she live, this woman? I'm just about to get to that, mate. Um, But when she proudly posted videos of the emu on social media, she was reported to the RSPCA and two of its officers turned up on the doorstep. She said she felt gutted, but had to tearfully hand over the bird, which is now in the care of specialists on a farm. Uh Uh-huh. That's amazing. Well, it's quite right, isn't Doesn't it? I mean, she, she, shouldn't, lives. she shouldn't be allowed to keep an emu in her house. It's, well, I mean, apart from the else, it might be a, a, a hazard. You could put it out in the garden, couldn't you? Well, an emu in a garden? Yeah. Well, how can you? Well, it might jump over the fence. Yeah, it might do. I mean, she might have had a... I'm you couldn't really that. tether it, could you? No, you couldn't really tether it. Now, where does she live? Hang on. Even I'm stored to... Because, I mean, unless we know where she lives, it might be uh, one of these slightly dodgy yes, stories. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, hang on. Uh, she says... Um, she says tearfully, I was hurt that someone tipped over the RSPA because we'd created a lovely home for Kevin. That's what she called her emu. Kevin? Yeah, Kevin. That's a stupid name for an emu. And had planned for when he got big. We were treating him well. I'd done all my research. It's so sad without Kevin. He was adored and became a real member of the family. Did she not work, this woman? Well, I don't think so. Um, she says, mm. uh, speaking for the RSPCA's intervention... Um, the, she's a mother, by the way, of two children, Ellie, four, and Reese, who's 19 months. Oh, oh three great. children and a four-month-old baby, oh, Molly. Well, it's the best idea to have a baby emu running around with all those kids. Yeah, and she says... Growing up to be a six-foot-tall bird. Yeah, I think it's because I nurtured him through incubation to hatching and the process of similarities to pregnancy. Mm. I felt all the same emotions, Yeah. So, anyway, she says... That's ridiculous. She knew at some point that I, I would have to move um, Kevin to a paddock, but I wished I could have kept him for a bit longer. The RSP serve confirmed officers called at Miss Harrison's home in Borden, Hampshire. Borden? Yeah, Hampshire. Is that near Portsmouth? No, I, th- I, I think it's... Uh, is it near... Or is it uh, further up north, sort of Winchester Way? I think it's Winchester Way. I think yeah, I was going to uh-huh. say near Winchester Cathedral. All right. The emu trick was handed over voluntarily. There's no suggestion of, uh, you know, being cruel to it or keeping it. I think it's a safari it. park around there, you know. Yeah, it could be. Well, uh, Longleat's not far away, is it? No, Longleat's in Bath. Yeah, OK. Avon. Yeah, but it's down that way, isn't No, it? it's nowhere near. I think that's a lovely story, It's that. a terrible story. It's I a think stupid it's a lovely and idiotic story. story. And she sounds like a rather idiotic woman, I have to say. Um, the RSPCA say it's that... Uh, time, by the way. People may buy them. Little idea of how difficult they can be to keep. Emus grow to more than six feet tall. They're the second tallest living bird by height after the ostrich. Until 2007, well, you required a licence to keep one under the Dangerous Wild Animals Act. Exactly. You can't keep it in a back yard in Hampshire. That's ludicrous. Well, I think it's a lovely story. Yeah. This, yeah, this, well, the, the reason why it's lovely that. is if I show you, there's a lovely little picture of little Kevin, and no. it's just a lovely little bird. No. Oh, oh, what a shame. Like what a shame. No, bizarre. You want to set fire to bats, but you like baby emus. Yeah. Coming up next is the Porky Quiz. The two mics simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. The greatest ever living Englishman, except that he's now dead, obviously. We'll defend to the death and age Tremendous orator, of course, Mr oh, Winston yeah. Churchill. Absolutely, the and best. he is, of course, the subject of the quiz. Yes, he is. As uh, voted, actually, for the first time by our listeners. Yes, that's right. Because we gave him the choice earlier in the week of either a quiz on Winston Churchill yes. or a quiz on the guy Gordon Kay. That's right. From Allo Allo. Well, actually, on the programme, Allo Allo. Oh, was that? Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. on the on the voting, it was Gordon Kay or Winston Churchill. Oh, OK, fine. I'm fr- sorry to tell you. OK. Uh, now, I've just got the questions in front of me. Yes. Uh, if you get one correct, yes. you will hear this sound. Four bears left Europe to avoid these quarrels. Excellent. Uh, if you get one wrong, you'll yeah. hear this sound. Have you been drinking? 
Ah. So there we are. Yes. There you have it. Okay. Uh, now, of course, there are ten questions, mm. all of which have the one correct answer. Yes. So uh, I don't want any shilly shallying around or claiming no, no. Uh, that you want to get uh, you know half a point for this or half a point oh, for no. that. Oh no, you've already sorted that out with the quizmasters, haven't you? No, I haven't. I haven't yeah, spoken to the quiz yeah, masters. All yeah. I do is I pass the subject matter to yeah. them. But you were able to pass comment on the questions no. two hours ago. In, uh, no. Yes, you were. I said I had a hunch they might be quite difficult. Yes, yeah. Oh, really? Where did we get that hunch from? I also had mm. a hunch, as I said, that Joe Conta yeah. would beat yeah. Serena Williams. Yeah, I, I was a, wrong about that. I have a hunch that you're a gerrymandra. Well, let's get let's on with see. it. Question number one. Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Which music hall stars formed a substantial part of Churchill's record collection discovered in his study at Chartwell? Hmm. What a stupid question. Well, it's a question about Churchill's record collection. Which Repeat I'm sure the question, you please. Which music hall stars formed a substantial part of Churchill's record collection discovered in his study at Chartwell? Music hall star. Mm. Is it one star? It's two. Two stars. Yeah. So were they a couple or are they two separate stars? Um, they're two separate stars, I believe. Right. Let me see. Music hall stars. Let me see. So, so I'm looking for four names. Yes, Chartwell. You're looking for four names? Yeah. What do you mean? There's two people with two names each. That's four names. You mean you're looking for two people's names? Yes, but two full names, two names. Musical star. What a stupid question this is. Well, I don't think it's I stupid. mean, you know, Churchill was one of the great statesmen in the history of the world. <laughs> you know, he fought the Second World War single-handedly almost. Well, he didn't. And actually. you're asking me about what was in his record Listen, collection. I don't write the questions. At Chartwell. Yeah. Hmm. He well, bought you... Chartwell in 1922. That's not the question. Right? That's not the question. When he moved out of Blenheim Palace, mm. right? I know all that. Okay. His music collection, musical stars, right? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say because I bet they must have been prior to the Second World War. No, they, no, they'd be post Second World War and up to his death in sixties. So I reckon one of them must have been George Formby, and I reckon the other one must have been. There'll be bluebirds. Vera Lynn, Vera Lynn, and George Formby. Incorrect. Have you been drinking? It was in fact Mary Lloyd and Harry Lauder. I've never heard of either. Well, you must have heard of Harry Lord. No. He's a massively big no, name. No, And, never, and Mary Lloyd is as never. well. Most question, ridiculous question. Question number two. Have a listen to this piece of audio. Policy of the Conservative Party is to impose taxes not only on tea and sugar, but also upon bread and meat. Not merely to say on luxury and comfort, but even on items of a prime necessity. When was this speech made? Who was speaking? What? Who was speaking? Who do you think was speaking? Was that Winston Churchill? Of course it was Winston Churchill. I need to have that played again, please. All right. Policy of the Conservative Party is to impose taxes not only on tea and sugar, but also upon bread and meat. Not merely to say on luxury and comfort, but even on items of a prime necessity. I, I am assuming, right, from my vast knowledge of this, that yeah. that was probably the general election campaign of 1945 after the war had been won and the coalition government uh, was then um, dissolved and uh, the election was called. So I'm saying 45. Incorrect. Have you been drinking? Uh, it was 1909. One of the reasons you couldn't identify his voice initially is because yeah. he was a much younger man and his voice wasn't so deep. Yeah, of course he was. So uh, he was actually president of the Board of Trade at that time. It was a budget speech. Hang on. In 1909? Yeah. In 1909, I'll have you know, he was a liberal anyway. Well, I didn't ask you what he, he was. He, he, I just crossed, asked you, I just he, asked he changed you from uh, being a Conservative to a liberal in 1904. Well, so that was, I mean, that's a ludicrous, not a ludicrous question. Well, it's a piece of random audio from yeah. absolutely plucked out of nowhere. There was no details or information at all about where it was uh, said, uh, what it took place, under which circumstances. Absolutely outrageous. Outrageous question. Not at all. It was just a piece of random well, audio. Could write, have been from anywhere the over the last 200 years. Well, if you'd been a student Matt. of Churchill, you would have known that Matt. his voice was higher when he was younger. It's anyway, no wonder, it's no wonder you, really you put... thought you had a hunch the questions were difficult because you, uh, you've seen them. Have you, have and you, you know they are blinking well, difficult. Would you like to just keep complaining or do you want to have question number three? Just get on with it. When was Churchill appointed Secretary of State for the Colonies? Secretary of State for the Colonies. Now... He had nine cabinet posts before he became Prime Minister, including Secretary of the Board of Pray, uh, Trade. Secretary of the Board of Pray? No, Board of Trade. Oh. Duchy of Lancaster. 
which uh, he was demoted to after Gallipoli, uh, the Gallipoli uh, fiasco of 1915. Uh, you don't get any points for this. Which one was this again? Uh, when was he appointed Secretary, Secretary of State for the Colonies? Secretary of State for the Colonies. Yes. It happened in the run-up to the Second World War. Colonies. Yeah, Colonies. I'll have to hurry you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Colonies. We're that, really not that, even a third of the way through yet. Yeah, Colonies. That would be 1936. Incorrect. No. Have you been drinking? It was 13th of February 1921. Question number four. The ridiculous. What was the question. name of Churchill's wife? Twenty-four. Uh, Churchill's wife. Yes. Uh, my darling, sweet Clementine. Well, Clementine. It's, Her it's, name is Clementine. I, I need two names. What? I need two names. Clementine Churchill. Incorrect. No, it's not incorrect. That's not her name. Her name was Clementine Spencer when, after she was married because it's from the Spencer family. Well, I need family. to know what her name was before she married him. You didn't say that. You said, what was her name? Well, her you name get half Clementine. a point for Clementine. Yeah. Do you want to give me her second name? Uh, her second name was something like Cushu. Clementine Cushu. Cushu. Yes. Incorrect. No. You get half no. Four no. bears left Europe to avoid these quarrels. Hosier? Yeah. H-O-Z-I-E-R. Uh, question number question. five. Where did Churchill live from the ages of two? Five? This isn't the fifth question. This is the fourth. No, we've done fourth. The fourth, no. the fourth was what was the name of his wife. Mm, get on with it. Question number five. Yeah. Where did Churchill live from the ages of two to six? Two till six? Yes. Sorry, what? where did Churchill live? Where did he live when he was two until he was six? He was born in Blenheim Palace, right? I didn't ask you where he was born. Yeah, he was born in Blenheim Palace. And between two and six, yeah. he was largely looked after by his nanny. And he um, now he bought Chatsworth in nineteen twenty-two. You. You're taking too long. No, no, here. no, no. But the com- the questions are so complicated. Well, it's not and so difficult. detailed. Well, you either know it or you don't. Between the age of two and six, yes. he lived. He lived in. He lived in Kensington in London. Incorrect. Have you been drinking? He lived in Dublin. Uh, because, in fact, his grandfather was appointed Viceroy uh, and he then employed his father as his private secretary. Oh, a rubbish nonsense question. Question number question. six. These Ready questions for... are getting worse, by the way, question not number... better. It's no wonder <laughs> you said they were going to be difficult. You'd seen them all. I had no all. idea. Question you, number you, six. You've been material in, in, that, in right. putting these questions together. Look, we've only got about two more Get minutes. Get on with it. Question number six. Which newspaper commissioned a young Churchill to cover the Cuban War of Independence? The Cuban War of Independence? Yes. Um, Churchill was commissioned to cover the Second Boer War in 1899 by the Morning Post. That's not the question. It's about the Cuban War of Independence. Uh, Cuban War of Independence, it could have been the Morning Post or it could have been the London Times. I'm going to opt for the London Times. Incorrect. No. Have you been drinking? The Daily Graphic. Doesn't even exist these days. Not anymore, no. What question number seven. Question. Well, neither is the Morning Post. Question number seven. Yeah. When did Churchill change party allegiance from the Conservatives to the Liberals? I just told you that. Conservatives to the Liberals. Yeah, well, you may have told me what you thought was the right answer. That was in 1904. Conservatives, hang on, Conservatives mm. to Liberals. Yeah, he was a Conservative up to 1904. Yeah, there was more and, than one occasion, of course, wasn't there? No. He, beca- he became, no, there wasn't. He was a Conservative till 1904 and became a Liberal, and then he changed back. Um, uh, but you only asked me when he changed. 1904. 1904 is the correct answer. Hooray! Four bears left Europe to avoid these quarrels. Question number eight. Here's another political question. Yeah. Churchill stood down as an MP at the 1964 general election. What constituency did he represent at the time? 64. Yeah. Uh, that was his last post as an MP. He was MP in five different constituencies. Uh, the one before... His last one was Epping, which is now where Rod Stewart lives. But his last one was down the road in Essex at Woodford. Correct. Four bears left Europe to avoid these quarrels. Question number nine. Yes. What letters does Churchill have after his name? A lot. What are they? Well, there's so many, you can't detail them. Well, you can, actually. Uh, Sir Leonard Spencer... Sir, Sir Winston Leonard Spencer Churchill... Um, and the the uh, most prominent of the letters after his names are represent him as Knight of the Garter. So what is that? Uh, K K uh, KG. 
Yeah, that's one. Yes. Next. What? Well, he's got loads of letters after his name. I want to know what they are. Well, I've just told you the most prominent one, the first no. one, is KG. Well, he's got more than that. No, the garter. He's got more than that. A lot more. Well, he's the Right Honourable as well, because he's a member no, of the Privy Council. That's not correct. No, hang on. You asked me what letters after his name, and I said the ones immediately after his name are KG. No, he's got a lot yeah. more than that. I told you lots. Well, lots isn't the answer. Well, you it need is. To tell me what they lots are. Lots and KG is the complete answer. So that's all you need. So Winston Churchill, KG, lots. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> no, you, you idiot. But they're far too, far too many to detail. I wouldn't have time. Well, you could give it. Have me. You, you, they are. They are a series of letters, right? Which are like KG. Yeah. In you know two initials, which is not that difficult to say. If you know them, you know them. If you don't know them, you just say you don't know. PM, because he was Prime Minister. That, those, you don't get letters PM after you yeah. know if you're Prime Minister. Of course Minister. you do. Rubbish. Of course you do. Absolute rubbish. KG Knight of the Garter KG, was the most prominent PM, one. PM, lots. No, no, no. <laughs> that's all you need to know. That's my final well, answer. Well, that's incorrect. No, it's not. I will tell you. KG, OM, CH, TD, DL, FRS, RA. And you expect me to remember all those? Well, you're supposed How to be an expert. Utterly ridiculous. I get at least half a point for KG. How can you get half a point? it was the most point? prominent one. You can't get half a point. I can. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 letters after his name, and I, of uh, which you got two. And I got the most prominent ones, which no. is KG, which no. is your most senior no. honour, no. because that's the letters immediately after no. his name. This is a ridiculous no. stitch up. No, not correct. It's absolutely right. utterly Here's your chance to get ridiculous. You've currently got two and a half out of nine. You've last chance I've to got get, at least three. You've got a chance to get three and a half. So many stupid questions. You've got a chance to get three and a half, which is over and above what I said you would get. Just get on with it. Question number ten. Who preceded Churchill as Minister of Defence in 1951? Minister of Defence in 1951. Now, what happened was... You haven't got a lot of time for this, because you've wasted a lot of time shouting and complaining. I tell you who I think it was. I think it could have been, it could have been, right, Minister of Defence, 1951. Could well have been Anthony Eden. Is that your final answer? Or it could have been... Well, is that your final answer or Hang not? Hang on. You don't get multiple choice. I'm thinking choice. aloud. I'm thinking aloud. I'm, I'm told we have to Anthony finish the quiz. Incorrect. Have you been drinking? It was Manny Shinwell. Manny Shinwell. So I'm afraid the grand total was a of grocer. your expertise on Winston Churchill amounts to two and a half out no, of ten. rubbish. Another complete and utter rubbish. failure. I can name you all the five <laughs> constituencies he was in. I can name you the 11 cabinet two posts he had. Two and a half had. out of ten. I can tell you... Shocking. I can tell you the name of his rubbish. dog. His dog's name was Rufus. Yeah, really. He was a poodle. Yeah, Rufus was done better on a quiz than and, you. And, and then he had a second dog. And he called it Rufus the Second. Rufus the Second yeah. done better than so you, you as well. So you didn't, you know, you didn't ask me that. You I should ask me more questions like that. I don't set the questions. You, How about, how's a question I think about you his do. dog? I think you How do. How is a question about his dog? Anything to do with Winston Churchill? I also can tell you his favourite champagne was um, Paul Roger. Was it? Yeah, and okay. his favourite whiskey was Red Label Johnny Walker. Really? Yes. Well, I'm sorry, those yeah. questions didn't You should ask up. me questions like that. I, well, knew every, I knew everything about Churchill. Really? I Two knew, and a half out of ten. I knew that he was in the Grenadier Guards where he was Lieutenant Colonel well, in 1915 well, that would have and 16. You, that would have helped you with the letters after his name, but never mind. We're out of time now. This is Talk Sport. Rubbish. The Two Mics, simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. The lady and I are not the same. Great tweet here from Matt. He says, yeah. a young lady reared an emu. I'll yes. assume it's like an emu, but it dresses in black and listens to depressing music. <laughs> What's that You don't mean? get that, do you? No. Well, you know what an emo is? Emo? Emo. No. Yeah, it's a person who uh, listens to a particular type of music oh, really? and is a sort of particular social, um, I don't know, a part well, I of think... a social tribe. Uh, yeah, OK. I think we should concentrate on the responses now to the quiz. I mean, to say oh, yeah, it was a stitch up. I mean, for instance, William says, here. and it's great. He yeah, says, Jay says, what a plank. No, 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 hang on. I started first. William says, Porky, I started if you've got first. question nine right... Yeah. OK? Yeah. Ask old Gene, MG, would you have got six points as he wanted six different answers? Well, you might as well ask... Well, uh, hang on. If, if, Clementine... You know, if a, if a, if a Clementine, meteor, you wanted on, two answers. Well, and I've got one point. Yeah, well, here's the, here's Her the point, Her name right? was Clementine Churchill. You can, you, listen, you can ask about the quiz as long as you like. Anybody out there can ask a question. I mean, if the if studio got hit by a meteorite mm. and we didn't get to finish the quiz, you know, would you get an extra point for that? It doesn't matter. What if? 
What if is not the point. Here we go. There were 15 letters after his name. Here you are. You gave me two. JPK, That's not sufficient to get anything. JPK says, uh, Porky, full marks in all political questions. Does MG work with the Quizmasters to deliberately denigrate you? Now, how about Very this? Very good question. How about this as proof that yes. there is no gerrymandering, right? Because as you quite rightly said, yes. the question about when he, remo- when he moved from being a Tory to a Liberal... You'd already answered that question, right? Yes. So I already knew that you knew the answer, and yes. yet I still asked you that question. That's one of the ones you got. That's because you had to ask me that question. No. Otherwise, Why? Otherwise, you would have been cheating. Yeah, but you, you, you always claim that I changed the question. You would have been cheating. No, but you always claim that I changed the questions. Now, had I been properly gerrymandering that quiz, that question would Andy, have been changed. Hang on. That yeah. question would have been changed. No, no. Because I knew you were going to get it no, right. No, no, no. You would have been then exposed no. as the cheat you are. No, because nobody uh, else sees the questions uh, before I do, right? Uh, oh, oh, apart no, from, oh, no, Apart no, from no, the no, independent no, quiz no. Oh, no, no, I think so they do. So you would not have known that that question was in the quiz. You didn't have a spare question because you'd got too far in the quiz no, and you ditched, oh, ditched your alternative always telling me, questions. No, you're always telling me I have spare questions. Andy so says... So which is it? You can't have it both ways. Andy says, as I said... I was going to fact check, and here's the grand total. Porky actually got nine out of ten. Oh, really? And he's is this what, bloke uh, texting in from a lunatic no, asylum? No, what he's done is he's broken down them question by question and, you know, worked out, for instance, hmm. if it was a fair question, it wasn't, and he says, I got nine out of ten. So, so how does he work out he got nine out of ten? Let's well, go through the questions. The, question, the, uh, let's see, question no. number one. Yes. Which music hall stars form a substantial part yeah. of Churchill's recollection? Yeah. You got that wrong. Well, this is a ridiculous question. Oh, so what, you get a point for it being a ridiculous R- question? A ridiculous, qu- unrelated like a, and ridiculous like question. a flaming idiot. Listen, I'm not going to dwell on one response uh, for the rest of the show. How about I this? I want to thank JPK for that. Uh, How about this from Mick? Sorry, I want to thank Andy for those observations. Here's, here's Mick, who says, Never in the field of talk sport history has so little been scored by Porky. Hashtag plank. No. Uh, that... And uh, James says the Porky quiz should really be renamed the Porky Whinge. Yeah. Now, the, the main response has been on the question about uh, Churchill's wife. Uh-huh. And Mervyn, for instance, says, uh, uh, Porky, you were asked uh, for the wife's name, yeah. implying they are married. So the answer is Clementine Churchill. Any other answer is gerrymandering. Listen, no. The point is, is that all of you uh, blithering idiots out there who think you should side with Porky, right? Because is, that a, you... is that a way to, to yes, address our audience and call no, them blithering this idiots? This is how I'm addressing those who think no. that you've been stitched up, right? No. The blithering no. idiots who think that you've mm. been stitched up, right, mm. should take a leaf out of the book of uh, Solomon, right? And here's Solomon. the point. Yeah, the book of Solomon. Solomon. Yeah, well, you know Solomon. About Solomon. Solomon is the man who makes judgments, right? Yeah. I am not in a position yeah. to give or take away points. All I can do yeah. is read you the question Solomon's and, minds. Say, and say to you, you King anything? Solomon's Minds. Yeah, King Solomon's Minds. Yeah. Mind, yeah, that's a movie that was made yeah. back in sort of 1958 or something. Yeah. One of your favourites, no yeah. doubt. The point is, is that I'm not empowered to give mm. you points for anything on either side of the answer. I've told yeah. you that. Yeah. You either answer the question as it's given to me, yes. I, or you don't get any points. Right. Dave Simple the, as that. Dave the All Mill. I know is that when I see the question, yes. what was the name of Churchill's wife, Clementine Hosier, married her in 1908, yeah. uh, all I get is, yeah. is the answer. Dave the Milk, who follows, uh, is an avid listener, follows the quiz very closely, he says the original question was, what's the name of his wife? Yes. Porky gets it right. And then MG says, uh, no, actually, uh, not wife, her name before. Well, because the answer is Clementine Hosier. All I can do... That wasn't the name of his wife. The name of his wife was Clementine Churchill. If you'd have said... What was uh, Winston Churchill's you, was wife's next? name before if they I were said, married? No, if that's I said a different you, question. Well, they may have worded it badly. They, right? Oh, we accept that. They, they may have worded oh, it badly. Misleading question. Well, I can't, I can't. That's an extra point for me. That's four and a half. No, you've only got two and a half. No. You've only got two and a half. Right, well, that's three and a half then. You want three and a half points out of ten. That makes you happy, does it? Yeah, well, it makes me happier. Giving, I'm not giving it to you. Happier. Well, because I'm Because if taking you keep it. whinging, the, I'm empowered to take a point away. Yeah. So you've only got one and a half now. Um, uh, everybody's uh, piling in on the Clementine. Yeah, everyone's one. piling in. How about this yeah. from Dave? Yeah. What a pathetic effort. Expert my backside. What? David says, what a pathetic effort. I care Expert my backside. About such glib I just uh, want to make sure that you're not reactions. actually reading all only the ones which are supposedly backing you. Uh, Sh- uh, Sharky here says... Um, uh, Paul Kip is absolutely right about uh, Winston Churchill's favourite tipple. The co-op near me has started selling Paul Roger champagne, well known as Winston Churchill's favourite. So there you go. Def says, I mean, never in the brilliant. field of human this quizzes of so many owed so little to so few. Probably knows more about Churchill the dog. Uh, I knew so much about Churchill. I had done plenty of research on top of an already full uh, what should I say? Full brain, full of uh, Churchill fact, <laughs> and uh, and and the questions were completely misconceived. Neil says this: Porky, except you have no idea, you're such a crybaby. 
No, which I'm not. is a very good way I, of describing you. I just uh, demand to be treated fairly, that's all. You are treated fairly. I'm not treated fairly. You were decent. It was like, what was that uh, line from the movie? You know, he was decently... Um, he was decently treated, he was decently fed, and then he was decently shot. <laughs> I can't remember what that's from. No, I can't either. If you were actually having to answer questions to save your own life, yes. you'd be a dead man. Uh, uh, how about Scott? He says, MG, what letters did Churchill have after his name? Porky, lots. Yeah, <laughs> well, hang on. after I gave you the main one, which was KG, yeah, which was the main one. You gave okay. me two out of 15. I gave, I gave you the main one. Tom says... Uh, your hunch was correct, MG. And then, uh, what's it called? And emoji. What you, and what did you say after em- that? Emoji with a face full of shock. Face shocking, of shock. uh, and, and I think Tom means shocking the way you no, do it. No, he says it. shocking performance no, by Porky. Read no, it no. out as it no, is. No, no, no. Read no. it out as it is. No, no. Don't try and gerrymander that's the, twit, not, that's, the tweet. That's not do the you way. Want me, do you want me to read out what it actually says? That's not the way I read it. Really? That's not the way I read it. Ben says this, the words after Porky's name should be moaning plank. See, the trouble with you is you think you can mm. actually edit people's tweets. No, Everybody no. on Twitter can see the tweets no, because no. I've retweeted them. No, no, so no. when you edit them in your favour, it makes you look even more I don't. of a crybaby. I don't. No, I don't. I don't. Uh, right, here we go. JPK says, I have to take issue with the Quizmasters. Last week we were promised multiple choice and longer duration. Uh, could I have an explanation from MG, please? Any explanation for that? Promise what? Huh? Who was promised multiple choice? He's obviously he's obviously gone delirious. No, JPK. no, no, no. I'm I clearly know. he's clearly been at the old um, there, jumping juice. There was reference to that. Well, anyway, I'm you know. Do you I, want to have a multiple choice question? Uh, no, thank you. No, so I you don't, don't need you don't, one. You don't want that, do you? Here we go. Here we go. Mervyn says Porky should get an extra point. You show terrific knowledge uh, on Churchill in many many different aspects of it, um, and now Mervyn is pointing out that you have conceded. Oh. One of the questions might have been badly worded. It is laughable, says Mervyn, and I totally agree with it. Is Mervyn feeling all right? Uh, Mervyn... You better keep taking your medication, no, Mervyn. is a straight-thinking sort of a guy, and those are the sort of people that make this show what it is, yeah. and you come along and corrupt it with your foul cheating. <laughs> That's twice you've used the word foul. Yeah, well, I'm... Foul in terms yeah. of nudism, yeah. and foul in terms of cheating. Yeah, well, I get wound up, don't I? Well, I don't know why you do. Yeah, because... Charles says, never mind Churchill's dog, Rufus, doing better than Porky, the Churchill nodding dog would have done better. Oh, that's very nice, isn't it? You see, people are now taking the mickey because you... I mean, if any, you know, I, I, I'm I, exasperated. Are you? Mm-hmm. That's a good word, that, exasperated. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel at the end of every week I've been mean, working with you for four nights. Oh, well, that's your the problem, The bad news is I've got to come back on Saturday yeah. for two more hours of it. Well, I have to work out whether or not, you know, a man of your absolutely disgusting moral principles, you know, <laughs> where you where you uh, you manipulate and cheat everything to make yourself look uh, better than me when you Listen, know you're not. As I keep it's telling outrageous. you, as I keep telling you, it is not a competition between you and I. These questions are set independently, right? I ask the questions. I don't believe you that. answer them. I don't believe. I don't that. regard myself as winning against you just because you've only got two and a half out of ten. I don't believe that. It's not a question of I me winning or losing. How do we think Mrs May made on her initial uh, uh, visit to America? Well, she said some interesting things about Trump. I think she's done Trump. very well. Um, and we were hoping to, te- good to speak reports, to very Tom good Newton Dunn. But unfortunately, he's been sort of missing in transit. Yes. Uh, because I think they're moving around quite fast yes, at the moment. Yes, between one in one sort of engagement and another. Yeah. I think she's done all right. I think she's done But, okay. I mean, it'll be fascinating to see what actually... Ca- what, you know, what the first sort of presidential head of state meeting looks like. Yeah, it will. Um, and I slightly worry that uh, she's going to give away the store yeah. in some ways just because she wants to be popular with Donald Trump. But I we shall not. see. It's completely unnatural what, to walk around naked. It, well, I don't think there it is. There is something wrong with you if you feel OK. Have you never walked around naked in your house? Never. Why not? I don't. There's nobody there. I don't care. What if it's really hot? Nakedness is. Uh, you, is, yeah, is see, a... so you're screwed up about it. No, you've got no. some kind of complex about no, being no. naked. No, no, you're put ashamed of your own body. You don't want to catch yourself in the mirror. No, nakedness is a foul um, uh, being. You think nakedness yeah, yeah. is foul, and you think that's a normal thing to think. I, I, anybody who walks around naked is mad because, Why? well, because the human body has to have cover and protection. Not that's if you're in the right. privacy of your own home. Well, why would you want to walk around naked at home? Because well, it's really hot. No! Why would you want to do that? What's wrong with you? Because it's really hot. It's undignified. Have you never slept naked? No. Really? No, definitely not. Never? It's undignified. What if you're sleeping with somebody else? Well, of course you sleep naked if you sleep with somebody else, you idiot. So you have, then? Sorry? So you have slept naked? Yes, of course I have, yeah. But, I mean, I wouldn't go to bed naked on my own. Of course I wouldn't. Why no. Not? 
Well, like, it's mad. Yeah, it's Why crazy. Is it mad? But anyway, we're not talking about that. We're talking about nature. You've never, right? you never gone swimming naked. What? Swimming naked. 